29 movies. I know. It's going to be a lot. Taking on a big task tonight. A big task indeed. All right. Ready to roll? Let's do this. And hello, everyone. My name is Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Warburg. Alongside me, as always, is Patrick, a.k.a. Mr. Fusion. Greetings and salutations, everybody. And, of course, it's time for episode number 50. It's our two-year anniversary. Two! So, of course, you know, we had to go big and bust out the whiteboard and finally do our MCU ranking, because now we're up to, I cannot believe this, 29 movies, and that's just the movies. That's just, we had actually talked before we actually rolled, should we include the the, 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 the TV productions as well? And that was going to be a bit of work, a lot of work to put on us, so. Very much so. Let's just stick with the movies. You're, you're, you're forgetting the big thing. The, uh, the elephants in the room, singular. We're in the same room together. I know. We're in person for the first time here for our two-year show, and I can't. I can't wait to get started. We haven't seen each other though in three years. Yeah, it's been since RTX nineteen. Yeah, RTX twenty nineteen. Yep. Yeah, it was. I think the last time I saw you and the J Bros and Chris and everybody was we were at Gordo's. Yep, we went and got in Gordo's. Was that who? Else, who was with us? Uh, my Joanne was my wife, and uh, also Andres. Yeah, he was there. It, yeah, yeah. And there were a few other folks too. It wasn't yeah, just it a, was a yeah. Uh, Alyssa was there. I Alyssa think too. was there as well. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was a good time, and then. Yeah. That was also the trip we had seen the prior Spider-Man movie. We saw Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes, we did. And then now we just got done watching Spider-Man No Way Home, the super, what was the cut? Super happy fun version, I think is what they called it. Yeah, so it's like the extra 10-ish minutes of of runtime on some cut content that I think added a little to the movie, but was like definitely kind of like, oh, I could see why they cut it. Mm -hmm. There was... Other than the the different like longer versions of the Spider Man interacting, there wasn't a lot of like you know hard hitting. Oh, why'd you get rid of that content? No. So I, I more than understood you know the differences there. Um, so yeah, it was still a good time though because it's a heck of a movie. Great movie. Um, I think the only probably real interesting addition was the uh, the conversation between the three Spider Men. Yeah, that was fantastic. Like the the ad libbing of like your experiences and all of that stuff. The uh the, the the oh there goes the marker. There goes the marker. Um, a few minutes in. Um, yeah, just their their ban- bantering back and forth was really fun because I think it just showed a, a bit of a that Toby and Andrew and Tom had a really good time doing it. Obviously. Oh yeah, I loved the. Uh, I just want to see the holes. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was that was a line that yeah, was not in the, the original holes. cut. Yeah, at all. And then also the the school the school interview where Betty Brandt interviews uh, everybody like mm-hmm. from the school come up a couple of his friends and the teachers and, and it kind of ex- just you know expanded on that story a little bit then there's the scene where the the, the gym teacher asks him uh, how to, to climb the wall and all that it just for me I think I think I mentioned this on the way out of the theater what it what it did for me was we went from far from home and boom right into no way home at the back end of it and then we jump right into it here. It gave it kind of it gave it a little bit more of a time to breathe a little bit. You know, that's what I felt like. We just got a chance, especially from the school aspect of it, just to breathe. And then you're happy. We got two scenes of Matt Murdock. Heck yeah, we not just the one. Just, yeah. yeah. So yeah, then he was uh, advising uh, Happy. They're following up the the implied Happy facing charges potentially that was in the theatrical cut. So yeah. now he actually is dealing with that. So that was fun, and that was really more or less it. A few scenes that were like a button or two longer. Yeah. Like the scene where he gets the the drink dumped on him, yeah. you know that orange whatever it is mix. That's a little bit longer at the beginning with uh, you know random New Yorkers giving him shit for being a kid. Yeah, which I thought was a nice touch, but ultimately didn't you know do all that much for the movie. But other than that, still a good movie. Because yeah. man, that that ending is just great Spider Man ending. Yeah, like that was a great great way to end off that movie, and then lead into now this next generation of what they're going to do with the Spider-Man movies. So. I was very happy with that. I did notice uh, watching this, like paying attention to the theater for what the third time, because I saw it twice when it came out. Um, he's only two blocks away from 30 Rock, which is the big tree, obviously, in downtown New York. So that's where the big final battle with Hawkeye takes place which is supposed to be around that time. So That's why we we thought there might be the crossover there, because yeah. it's like, you knew they they were using that shot in Spider-Man. Yeah, because I have, and you knew Hawkeye was using that shot. Yeah, because we saw them in the we saw it in the Hawkeye it was trailer. Clearly they were filmed around the same time. Yeah, and so for me it was like Kingpin has big ties to Spider-Man, and we knew that he was going to show up on this at some point. Echo, okay, we knew we knew the comic book tie-in, so I was a little disappointed that we didn't get a, a Spider-Man cameo or something. You know? Yeah, that would have 
that would have been great. Like he shows up after everything's gone down, all the police are there, fire trucks and stuff. Spider Man just swings in, like, what did I miss? Yeah. Even just a little button like that on like a Hawkeye post credit scene would have been would have been great. Yeah, and, and Hawkeye's like, where were you when I needed you? Like, yeah, like I hit the button. He's like, I'm I'm out being the na- friendly neighborhood Spider Man, dude. Like, <laughs> or him like, I don't even know. I didn't even know if you'd know who I am anymore. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like that kind of like where that just leads to the questions of man. Spider-Man's next appearance in the MCU is going to be weird. Yeah. Because it's like, then they're going to have to navigate the, the, the what ifs from that spell happening of like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Who, who knows Spider-Man? Like just, just Spider-Man. Who knows him? Do, are all the, like every single event the same? Just they don't know he's Peter Parker. That'd be weird. Like that would be a really weird butterfly effect because clearly multiple people, their lives are different now. Yeah. Well, I, so they can't be everything's the same. Obviously. Stark Industries has a big hole now in their data because, you know, they knew Happy and Pepper. They all knew that he was Peter Parker and he was the heir apparent. So, yeah, it's that. And I asked that to you in the car. I'm like, that's kind of a thing that kind of bothers me is how are we going to push forward with that? Mm -hmm. But we need obviously we need a fourth film with Tom Holland. We have to have it. Definitely. And I certainly hope they back back up the Brinks truck and give him the money because, man, he deserves it for carrying that. Like, that's it. He's a billion He's like, dollar movie carrier now, you know? Three like three times. He was one before Tom Cruise was a billion dollar carrier. Which is crazy. It's absolutely <laughs> bonkers. That it took until Tom Top Gun for Tom Cruise a to 30, get a 30 almost a 40 year old movie. Sequel. And now he finally gets his billion dollar. Billion movie. dollars, yeah. And he's been one of the biggest box office draws for 40 years. For all for 40 years, yeah. And yeah. it just finally got one. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, cuz that was like his third or fourth movie was Top Gun. Yeah, it anyway, was, was really early one. Um, any, what is the one? The football movie was his first movie, big movie, wasn't it? Might have been with when Leah was, Thompson. When was the all the right movies? All the right. Yeah, movies. that one. Yeah, I think that was his first, if I'm not mistaken, one of his first films. Might have been. And then years after, years after Top Gun, Interview with the Vampire came out, and that was a big one. But he still wasn't like a. When I say billion, I mean, '80s movies adjusted for inflation, obviously, you know. And it would, even even then, nothing was that big compared to Maverick. So yeah, yeah, but still a great movie though. I've rewatched oh, so many clips of that movie, and I can't wait to watch it again. <clears throat> so yeah, it's a great thing that we talked about this one because when we did a a dry run after we watched No Way Home in December, I, I said No Way Home had become my number two film, uh, that I had still felt Winter, Winter Soldier was number one. This is where we're gonna put everything on paper slash dry erase board. Yeah. We're really going to do this, and I'm going to switch shots because we have yeah, to set up. It's going to have ooh fancy graphic. One through 29 are going to be on this board. And Fusion's taking the board home to do God knows what with it. <laughs> so we'll, t- we'll get a photo at the end. I'll definitely put it up over the edit when we're done. I'll have a photo here, probably over the screen of our pre- a pre-shot. I have my football fantasy draft on Wednesday. This will probably Yeah, you're going to need it for a draft yeah, board for sure. Yeah. For sure. But yeah. So before we get started, uh, quick, what have we been watching? Of course, She-Hulk is, a, since we're talking Marvel, might as well talk She-Hulk. I've been really enjoying it. I love this show. Yeah. I love this show. It is exactly what it wants to be, which is just lawyer lawyer comedy set in the MCU, and the lead happens to be a superhero. I don't know if you've read all of the Dan Slott run. It feels like that, though. It is, it is Dan Slott's run. I mean, not the very early issues, because I think he really was like trying to test the waters, and then afterwards he just, after about... 10 issues he's like i'm gonna go full into you know with the character um but yeah i love it um i love the fact that the the people that are uh, bomb rating it were actually called out in this last week's episode like that's they, great that's just they put it in the show they put it in the show guys it's just like right in the the dialogue is making fun of these guys and it's great but uh hilarious good storytelling um i'm really interested in what like the callbacks they're gonna do I do like the fact that they're giving uh, Abomination a bit of a um, a rebirth because obviously he's going to be in Thunderbolts. We've mm-hmm. talked about this several times. Uh, Thunderbolts is going to be a show or a film for sure. I think it probably should be a Disney Plus show. I think so. I honestly think they can tell better stories that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, that's what Eternals should have been. We it's going to be on this board, and Eternals obviously the story that it could because of it of them spanning the the entire span of human existence. It should have been a Disney Plus show. Yeah, and a, you couldn't fit it all in a two and a half hour film. It just didn't. It couldn't. It just didn't work. So maybe Thunderbolts will be a um 
a Disney Plus show, but I don't know. I know Disney loves to get those box office numbers. They love those big bucks, so maybe not. And again, the streaming bucks. I mean, if you, if you can lock in subscriptions, that's just as worth it. Kind of like Xbox's model with their Game Pass. Yeah. That's worth it to them more than selling the box. Yeah. So did we ever get the numbers for Black Widows? Uh, like I don't pe- think they ever review? released them. They didn't ever release. Them. Not publicly released. I'm sure they know them. Yeah. Hmm. But. Okay. Well, man, like what I've been obviously She Hulk. Um, I finished up the uh watching the rewatching the first season of Agents of Shield. God, that first season was so well written fit into phase one and phase two. Well, yeah, it came into phase two, but it fit into phase two of the MCU perfectly. Um, I did have a complaint and I expressed this with you the other day. I really think they shouldn't have had Grant Ward turn Hydra. That's, eh, I liked it. I really liked it. I mean, I'm show. not saying it was bad and I understand why they did it, but they went a whole season establishing him as the muscle of these, of this core. And to kind of pull that away, just felt a little, eh, I could have done without it, but I understood because of John Garrett's role. It's just like such a good first season. I know with a low budget, the graphics and CGI weren't great, but they did what they could on that ABC budget. But um, I really loved the first season of Ages of Shield. I mean, I, going back and watching it again all the way through, I, I finished it up on Friday night. And I was like, oh man, I really enjoy this. And actually, my wife caught the first, the, the final few episodes, and she started asking because you know she watches the Marvel movies, but. She's not going to get into the shows because there's too much Marvel lore for her. It's overwhelming for her, right? But then she's watching and she's asking questions. So I bring up the Falcon and Winter—I mean, uh, the, the Winter Soldier and all that. You know, just the tie-ins to uh, to to Shield and and to the MCU. And she just was getting into it, and then she enjoyed the end of the first. So been watching that uh, She Hulk. Um, what else? First two episodes of the Ring of Power, Rings of Power. I'm yeah. liking it. You like it. I'm not saying it's awful. I just, I agree with a lot of folks that it's a little slow. Hopefully it picks up. I mean, the, the music is beautiful. The, the, the backdrop's great. Uh, the lore they're, the, that they're building from, you know, some of Tolkien's secondary books, I get that they're, they're trying to create a whole saga around it. And um, I'm very interested where they're going to go, but I'm hoping the pace does pick up. Yeah. Yep. I'm also watching House of Dragon. House of Dragon. Yep. I like, of I like House of Dragon in that it's surprisingly good. And it mm-hmm. shows that that there is a real, there's still a big interest with casual viewers for how uh, for Game of Thrones. So obviously we're gonna get the Jon Snow, which I'm happy about. We're gonna get the Jon Snow. Yeah, See, telling show. a continuation story, yeah. set in, like set in a world with, like, we don't know anything about their history, the Free Folk and all that stuff. Nope. Like, like that's a fresh world they could play in with one one to two established characters in yep. Tormund and and Jon Snow. Plus, we actually get to see a dire wolf. You know, instead of shuffling them off to nowhere because they're expensive. Yep. Not exactly like dragons are cheap, though. Makes you wonder how much of the dragons we're seeing early on, you know, in this sh- in House of Dragons, and when we're going to get a big gap of dragonless content because it is expensive. It is. Yeah, expensive. it's not easy to pull off, and it yeah. looks fantastic so far, and I'm quite liking it. Season the episode three drops tonight, but obviously we're recording, so I'll have to watch that later. Yeah. So we don't have any thoughts on that up to date. Um. So without any more hemming and hawing, let's get to our list. Let's get let's get to this, man. So we have twenty nine movies to get through yep. of current release. So let's let's start with any that we know. Like, do we have a unanimous number one for both of us? Because my first thought is what we're gonna watch Tuesday with our friend Jackie Kiki Fried Rice. At least that's still the plan. Don't know if it is yet. She had a big uh, issue with fleas. So who knows? Who knows if it's still a place we can go? She might have to come over here. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, we're going to watch The Winter Soldier. <clears throat> is, that, is that number one? Because for me, it's still the best pound-for-pound pound movie. Pound-for-pound, pound, the best MCU movie. Movie, not superhero film. Movie is, is The Winter Soldier. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I can't not back away from that. I mean, even after watching No Way Home today, I was like, mm, this one is such a great Spider-Man film it's like it's a sp- great spider-man story right yeah but es- the espionage backdrop the mystery the suspense along with the superhero and marvel history elements it's still the winter and and the russo brothers were they nailed their first mcu film yeah like, like the choreography i mean yeah. that that boat sequence when he shows up on the boat and just launches well, that dude in the first well, kick and Let's- you're like oh you, fuck it starts out before he even hits it he jumps out of the fucking plane without a parachute yeah, just like, like comics, just, Deadpool, everybody like made fun of it. That yeah. didn't mean it wasn't fucking no. awesome. Yeah, 
It was incredible. And it was, to me, still the stat standout moment. That, that boat sequence just... He's just fucking wrecking dudes. Like, oh yeah, he's Captain America. He would totally do that. Yeah. You know, like he actually got a like he really they like, owned Captain America as a character. They just perfected it. And the origin wasn't even bad. Joe uh Joe Johnston, I think, did the first one. He also directed the Rocketeer. Yep. He was First Avengers is still a phenomenal movie. That's definitely top half MCU for me, even all these years later. Sure. It's a great origin story. Yep. When the Winter Soldier is it is a 10 out of 10 thriller espionage movie, and it is a 10 out of 10 superhero movie. Yeah. So that makes it, like, two 10 out of 10 movies in one. And usually when it's when something is two different types of things, they don't mesh all that well. They blended those concepts so perfectly, and that's honestly where Captain America fits best. Yeah. In, in those kind of stories. Especially a modern day Captain America. Yeah. yeah, like set in modern day. You're not telling a you know back in the '60s, '70s Cap. It's yeah. you know he's set now in the modern MCU as we know it. You know, working with Black Widow and Shield and all that. He, that's the perfect world for him to live in, and it really feels like they absolutely nailed it. So I think unanimously we're going to go Winter Soldier number one. So I'll pop it on. The I'm going to give you the pin, and I'm going to do the shot. Here we go. All right, get the shot in. So it is Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Writing. I forget it kind of because he doesn't write in a straight line. Neither do I, guys. I'm left handed and I'm horrible at that. Yeah, I and my head's like tilts. So tilts. Man, it's real bad. No, it's okay. It's 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 close enough. This is this isn't for because remember we're an audio first podcast, right? Yeah, this is for us. This is for us and the the people that have to look at faces. Okay, guys, you're gonna get a wonky board, but just accept it. Okay. Hey, I hand drew our logo. Okay? Yeah, he did, and that was awesome. Good job there, Warper. Okay, so Winter Soldier, we both agree consensus number one. And I think with our friends that we talk with when we talk about our geekdoms, like all of the content we watch, I think the Winter Soldier is pretty much close to being everybody's number yeah, one. Yeah, it's at the very least, if it's not in everyone's top five, it means you haven't seen it. Yeah. Like, Jackie's never seen it. Yeah. She's watched a lot of the MCU, but hasn't seen that one. So I think it's probably going to end up in her it's top five. It's almost become a meme for her that she hasn't watched it, and I think watching it on Tuesday is going to become somewhat bittersweet for her. Yeah. Probably. Hey, if she doesn't want to, I understand. Yeah, I know. You know, not a, not a huge deal. I might watch it on, on, on my Xbox anyway, though, just because it's so fucking fun. Get some double daves and watch a movie. There you go. All right. Okay, so then do we have any consensus bottom picks? Like, what's your worst? Okay. And so, we can always adjust this as we go. Yeah. So for me, there are two films that are now 29. And more than likely, one of them is probably going to be yours if I have to really think about it. But uh, I'm Remember? resting... Are we low? Oh, how's our a little low. A little it's low. been a little low. Okay. I'm wrestling between Thor Dark World and The Eternals. Yeah, hard to say you're wrong. Both of those are really towards the bottom for me. I'm not sure where we're going to end up. Okay. But 27, 28, 29 is probably going to be some iteration of Thor 2, The mm-hmm. Eternals. And it could be any number of movies for that other spot, yeah. like Incredible Hulk, maybe Iron Cap- Man 2. Maybe Captain Marvel. But honestly, Iron Man 2 wasn't that bad. Captain Marvel, mostly because it was just entirely forgettable. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, most of the movies, like, even Thor 2 is not a bad movie. It's just nowhere near as fun as the rest. No. Right? No. Like, they've all still got great moments. Even Captain Marvel's got some good stuff. It's just, as a whole, they don't really land as well as the others. Yeah, yeah. So we'll try not to be too negative because that's not even fun. No, we our goal was never to really like take movies to task. More of like what we like, you know, the celebration of what we like. But when we talk about, there's got to be when you're listing 29 films, there has to be a last place. That's just the reality of it. Very true. There has to be a last place. Uh, for me, I'm gonna say. Not I totally forgot because there's just so many movies now. Iron Man Two is on the back half. Okay, back half. Uh, even though what's his name, Black's uh, Iron Man three is probably maybe at the top of the black bag. Now that we've seen Trevor Slattery again, I kind of want to rank it and higher. And we're gonna see Trevor Slattery a third time, a third time in Wonder Man. Yes, like Ben Kingsley's awesome. You don't even have they haven't even casted Wonder Man yet. Yeah, they just we... announced Trevor Slattery will return for the Wonder Man Disney play. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. Is Wonder Man supposed to be supposed to be comical? Or is he a straight man? 
Um, he, it's, it's a, he's like, it's a running gag that he is a straight man. He wants to be a Hollywood superstar, but he's a goofball. He's like a very serious plastic man. So yeah, I'm gonna throw a name. Okay, Jensen Eccles. And you know what? I will say because him and Supernatural, I don't have. Hilarious. I don't. Have, I I want Jensen Eccles after watching him in The Boys. I think he needs to be in the MCU. I think he doesn't have like the Hollywood kind of. I think the best way to describe it is what's his name from Mortal Kombat? Johnny Cage. Yeah. Okay. He needs to have like the, the personality of a Johnny Cage type, like someone okay. that. I'm, that never, is, I'm not a huge Wonder but Man. The, but you know, but the, but you know what? I I've watched. I haven't watched the entire run of New Supernatural, but I've seen plenty of it. I saw him in that um that really weird independent mil, uh, film. What is it? Ten inch, twelve inch hero. Um. Yeah. I haven't watched that one. Yeah. It's it's an independent movie where basically these girls and him work in a sandwich shop and they're talking about their love lives in California or whatever. That's the one his wife did. Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, Danielle. Hare. That's where he met his wife. Yeah, yeah, he met his wife on that movie. And uh, I forget her name. She, this, the other actress that she's Danielle she was, Harris, I think. Did Danielle Harris? I, maybe I'm blanking on the last name. Yeah, but it, it was Harris. I forget her first name. But um, that's where he met his wife. Um, on that on that uh, film, working on that film with her. But um, yeah, he he was a big kind of a braggadocious kind of guy in that film. So I can see he could pull it off because it, with that character, it's there's a running gag with that. And I know we're going on a Wonder Man tangent, but hey, tangents I, are what you're here I, for. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I do not have a problem with Jensen Eccles as Wonder Man, especially just playing. Who with, are you going to cast him? Playing as? off of uh, Ben Kingsley, Sir Ben Kingsley's uh, Trevor Slattery, I think it could work because I think uh, he was great in Shang Chi. Yeah, I do think to go off Eccles, if we were going to ever recast anything for whatever reason, okay, I do think he'd have been the perfect Star Lord. Yeah. He would have been. He'd have been perfect. But Chris Pratt is great in the role. Absolutely no, like you know, negatives there. No, no, no. But he is a bit more goofy. Yeah. And and Jensen Eccles being the tough guy that is a goofball. Yeah, he's probably work. The meta episodes of Supernatural, much like everything in Supernatural, pretty much he carries it all and he nails everything in it. He can do that kind of meta meta comedy quite well. So if someone's listening that has connections over to Disney. Please send this their way. Jensen Eccles needs to be in the MCU. Let's go. He needs to read for Wonder Man, at least. Just read it. See if it works. I'm not expecting it to work, guys, but after watching The Boys, he needs to You'd be You'd be stupid not to. Yeah. Because he's, mo- he's having a moment. Yeah. And he's awesome. Yeah, because, hey, Warner Brothers is going to snatch him up at some point. You know? Yeah. Someone's going to get Someone's him. Someone's going to snatch him up. He's going to... He needs to... He's, what, in his late 30s or early 40s now? I have no idea. Early 40s. 40s. Yeah. He's got a good run now. The forties are the new twenties now for action yeah. stars. So he'll keep going forever. Yeah. But this is he's at peak action star level. Yeah, now. let's go. Let's get, get him in it. something. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so speaking so of getting going. Let's get going on the let's last Let's start. One. Should we go chronological release? Okay. We can And go. then we'll adjust the adjust as we go. Sure. Kind of slot where we think movies okay, let's are. Okay, slot where they are. Yeah. Let's do that. So of course, first up, two thousand eight, May, which was a lovely birthday present for me back mm-hmm. then. On my eighteenth birthday. Uh Iron Man the first one. Where do we think that falls? For me, it's still top 10. Definitely top 10. I'm, what are we feeling? I'm going to say because of the Russo Brothers' other two films, um, I'm going to say he's prob- it's pro- Iron Man's probably 9 or 10, honestly. I agree. I'm going to say, thinking, what, thinking through my list in my head, I'm going to go with 10 on the dot. But we may bump it up to 9 as we go. I Especially as we get that. more, more arg- more points for reference. Okay. Things are going to move up and down. Okay. So. I'm cool with ten. I'm cool with ten. A good start. So John Favreau's Iron Man. Give myself a reference. I knew I should have brought a ruler. All right. No, it's a good. It's a good Iron Man. So Iron Man at number 10. So we have our number 10 so movie. So there's your top 10. That's, that'll round it out for now. Okay. Next up was, even not, not even two months later, Incredible Hulk came out. Okay. Also 2008. So that was Edward, Edward Norton, William Hurt as Thunderbolt Ross, who would continue as, with the character. Like I already mentioned, for me, that's in my 25 to 29 range. Um, it did. Now, they are bringing in a lot of that lore. Back, like they're really owning that as part of the MCU, which I never did expect. Yeah, especially after William Hurt passed. You know, like yeah, 
kind of assumed that thread would be tied off, but instead they're diving full on into it. Yeah. So I'm going to probably say 26 because it's still a perfectly fine beat em up, you know, two, two monsters fighting each other at the end of the thing movie. Mm-hmm. If there's the stakes are small, you know, yeah. it's just, hey, it's just these two dudes fighting, yep. you know. Well, I will say this. Um, much like uh, Barney Stinson and How I M- Met Your Mother had given the Karate Kid saga new life with Cobra Kai, like the idea for that, um, She-Hulk is given ideas of Emil Blonsky's like guilt in The Incredible Hulk because it's like he's just a soldier. His boss told him to go fight someone. That's what he's trained to do. That's what he's supposed to do. They point at a target and he goes and does whatever he has to, right? So like my perspective on Blonsky has changed a bit. Now, the if you haven't watched it, sorry, guys, with spoilers, that kind of cult thing's kind of hilarious to me. Like, he's a bit of a cold kind of hippie, like, personality now. I'm really interested to see where that goes because, obviously, if he's going to be in Thunderbolts, like, he's going to have to be the abomination. So, you know, he's going to have to be more aggressive. But um, I'm going to – I don't have a problem with Incredible Hulk at 26. 26? Yeah. All right. We'll it's not an now. awful like remember guys, I think the Incredible Hulk's a perfect example of it's not an awful movie. Like Thor to uh, when you really sit down and watch Thor the Dark World, I think people say it's a bad movie. It's not an a bad movie, it's just not a good movie, right? That's how I feel about Dark World. And so but when I think about like when we're creating this list, like there has to be what we f- figure the top movies and what we figure the bad movies of this collection and Incredible Hulk has its moments. I just, obviously, Norton really, like, he was such a difficult guy to work with. But they managed to tie in a few MCU bits in there to make it, and, and like, you know, like you said, with What If, with She-Hulk, you know. And Even with, the cutscene with, with Stark. Yeah. You know, like the post credit scene. Well, there is that Easter egg. I don't know, was it a deleted scene where, where Norton's walking through the, the, the Arctic Circle? And yeah, that's a deleted and the, scene, and, and then the, and the shield he, break, he tries to kill himself, yep. and then the Hulk comes out, and then yeah. you see Captain America and the shield. Yep. yep. Yeah, that was a deleted scene. Something that probably should have been in the original cut. Yeah. But because uh, it added some really dark, like well, this dude's like he's trying to kill himself. Yeah. Like he's taken every option he can. Yep. You know, and I like that they brought that back in uh, in Avengers. You know, when he mentions that Ruffalo runders is yeah. like, I tried. Well, hell, in She Hulk, they've gone meta. You know, it's like hey. That's a different time. I was a completely different person, literally. Like, yeah. They, they, I, I really like how they've embraced Incredible Hulk in the MCU. Yeah, it's all it's all canon. If so. we're if we're going to, and because there are talks with with uh, there's rumors that uh, Disney and Universal are working on an agreement so that they can get a World War Hulk film. It'd be crazy out. not to, because like, look at what Sony was able to get out yeah, of it. Because you know, bank. Sony made bank on that deal. Yeah. F- with no risk. Nope. Because who foot, Marvel footed the bill for everything, yeah, right? for quite a lot of it. I don't know if they were the ones paying the actors. No, they weren't paying the actors, but they paid for like the production, like this everything else. They, they, they were managing they, the production. The studio, Marvel Studios, co- covered the cost of everything but the salaries. I think. Yeah. So like. Yeah. That I mean, Universal would be crazy to not take that deal. Well, and Ruffalo's not going to demand a twenty million dollars salary. Obviously. No, exactly. He's he's not exactly. I, mean, I like Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. He's not Chris Hemsworth. No. You know. He's not Tom Cruise, you know. So Tom Cruise is now a billion dollar actor, guys. Heck yeah. Um. Okay. So I have no problem with Incredible Hulk at twenty six. Yeah. Okay. So then the next movie that came out was a, the first sequel, already that fast, uh, Iron Man two. Okay. And as we've alluded to, it's back half for us. Yep. So Fusion, I'm gonna let you write this one up. Okay. If you would want to, where are we putting? At least at first glance, where are we put an Iron Man two. When I think about the back end movies that are still left, I'm probably going to say Iron Man Two is probably in the high twenties. I don't know where you feel. Somewhere between twenty and twenty two for me. With Iron Man Two. Okay. Okay. Because I would say if you know later on when we get to Iron Man Three, back end of the top half. Iron Man Three. Because Iron Man Three is not a bad film. Iron Man Two, not an awful film, not a good film for me because I think John Favreau kind of crack under the pressure well i think he he didn't get to do what he wanted to no. do yeah, that exactly. was the first Obviously, instance of disney and feige yeah. saying well it wasn't even disney yet uh feige saying no yeah and the other thing we have well, to it with, wasn't feige yet no it wasn't Feige. avio rod was so it would have been yeah it would have been that that structure well and i think avio because avio rod has he's now handling sony's marvel stuff which shows why exactly 
Um, Mar- Avi Arad is just a little out of touch. He 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 was he pushed things for the X Men, you know, the Fox X Men movie. So I'm not a big fan of Avi Arad, and for him to be heading over the Sony stuff, and I know Sony's really pushed uh, for Kevin Feige to be more of a heavy consultant, but Avi Arad's not going to let that happen. You know, no, Avi Arad likes his position. He's he's still angry that he was pushed out of Marvel Studios, you know, and they gave eventually gave it to Feige. But um, I'm going to say probably 21 for me. All right, write her up. All right. Do you have any arguments with that? No, not not right now. It may get may get may get moved. Iron Man two is on the board at twenty one. The next one that released would have been, I believe, Thor, the first Thor. The first Thor. Mm-hmm. So that was Hemsworth's first outing with his blonde eyebrows. Oh god, it was so bad. Why? It's Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. What were you doing? Marvel, what were you doing? It's Chris Hemsworth. Why were you messing with that? Why were you dyeing his beard? I don't understand it. It what was, gets me he is, was all blonde. I, I know. What gets me is that, you know, a couple months later when Avengers releases, he's got his natural dirty blonde hair and normal eyebrows, and everyone's like, okay, he's a good-looking guy. It's like, yeah. When he's able to look like a normal when human. When he looks like a normal human, like the blonde eyebrows make him look weird. But I like the fact that that uh, that Hems- Hemsworth has embraced that. He's yeah. like, you know, he, he he's got a really good sense of humor. And he makes he take he's very lighthearted about the the bleached eyebrows. I think someone out there said that they're trying to work on um a fan video version of Thor where they're going to CGI his eyebrows. Yeah. I'm all for that, guys. Go for it. Internet, do your thing, man. Do your thing. Uh the first Thor movie, I'm Oh man, this is a this is actually I'm a fan of the first Thor movie. I like it. It's the the theme is perfect. The music theme is yeah. awesome. The Asgardian theme knocked it out of the park. Tom Hiddleston's Loki, great stuff. Coulson's still hanging around doing his thing before you know they killed him off like and a bunch of punks. We get introduced to Hawkeye. <laughs> it's got a lot going for it. Yep. You know Natalie Portman's awesome. Yep. You know, like it leaves um, Idris Elba. You know, gets that dope scene where he breaks out of the ice. Oh man. You know, like it's really the the cheapness of it that kind of sets it apart. It's like it's like a two block town that doesn't exist. Really? That you couldn't just film it in a town? You couldn't just pick a town in New Mexico? I appreciate that they were still able to get sponsorship by Seven Eleven though, because you see that Seven yeah. Eleven in the middle. Like, of the why would Seven Eleven be in a town that's that small, small that yeah. also has a diner? Yeah. So weird. It's a weird, like a bunch of Dutch angles. It's a weirdly shot movie. Yeah. But it still works emotionally. So I would probably put it halfway at 15. I'm okay with it being at 15. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right, I'll take this one. You'll take this one. I'm okay with this being at 15. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's worthy of saying it's at the, 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 first, the first half of the collection. Yeah. I know, guys, it's 29, technically not half. I get it. The end of the R is half. Yeah. Okay, so Thor, 15. All right, so we're, we're at 15 now. There's Thor. We've got 15. our first, almost our first full phase done. Yep. The last of the phase one movies of the solo movies is Captain America, the first Avenger. Okay. And like I've already mentioned, it's a very good origin story. I do think it's a better movie than Thor. I do like Iron Man 1 more just for the just fun of it. Like Iron Man 1 still, still rocks. Oh, yeah. And it still rocks literally because that, 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 that metal slaps. That metal theme yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. I can't believe they've gone away from it. And I hope with whatever they do with the Iron Man, you know, IP going forward, they bring it back some way. Because uh, it was composed by Mar- Ramin Jawadi. Yep. One of the greatest composers that we have right now. I would think that they're probably gonna try to go back with Ironheart. Because remember, from what, what we've seen out there from Ironheart, like the toys and all that, she's gonna have a much more original metal like Mark one look for her. At the very yeah, beginning. so bring back the original theme because it was awesome. It. And it, it it could be a, it could be like a a metal slash hip hop version if you want to carry off because she's supposed to make her supposed to make her introduction on Wakanda Forever. Um, okay, I, I, I'm I'm I think that's fair. I think that Iron Man is still a better film. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna quick close something on my computer because I see we're dropping or skipping some frames due to encoding. No. It's okay. okay. I can use the the audio's been fine. I'm just going to close Discord and a few things in the background. Okay. Um, let's say 13. That's fair. 13. I'll get 13. I think with the first Avenger, what I love about this one 
it is a full on 1940s war propaganda film. It fits the mood fits, the aesthetics, the music. Yeah, that's why Joe Johnston was the perfect choice because he yep. did the Rocketeer, which is exactly similar era, similar themes. Yep. Right? Like and, and that was like one of the first original, like really well done superhero movies. Yep. The Rocketeer. That are, it's yeah. very modern. Like yeah. go watch the Rocketeer. Yeah, it's it, it ages well. It ages well. I will say that. For our early nineties. And it's early nineties, like it came 90s, like ninety one, I think. Ninety one, ninety two, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I'm a big fan of First Avenger. Um I think we were we both knew who Chris Evans was because we saw saw the losers a couple years before. Obviously, the Fantastic Four. Tommy Lee Jones, right, was yeah. in it as the as the curmudgeonly general with yeah. some great lines. Haley Atwell. Haley Atwell, I think, became a star from this. Heck yeah! I mean, she's, she had a bunch. Of, she had a number of shows after this movie yep, came out. Yep, yep. Great personality. I think she's one of those like the tough the tough female personality in the MCU. Obviously, one of the earlier characters outside of you know Black Widow. Um, but yeah, man, I, I really love the first event. Yeah, it's an all around a but fantastic. The tough movie. thing is, there's just so many like great movies. Yeah, there's so many nines then. in this in this top ten, yeah. in the top fifteen. Yeah, that it's it's hard to crack that. Yeah, you know, even counting for the kind of nostalgia of it, like uh, Dominic Cooper as as uh, Howard Stark. Yep. Like it's got like going for it. Uh, Hugo Weaving as the bad guy. Yep, tying we- into the Thor lore with the Tesseract and yep. everything. Like. It was a great world building movie and also just a really fun war film. Yep. Which we don't have a lot of. No, we don't. So now of course we get into our first team up movie. Marvel's The Avengers, which came out in twenty twelve and I saw thirteen times in theaters. It was it was times. it was my generation Star Wars. You know what I mean? It's a fair assessment, man. Like my I- dad, even in small town Iowa, my dad went and saw Empire Strikes Back twelve times. In the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, even more than I am now. Because there was no theater for, like, an hour. They drove that far every time to go but see to that movie. Fair, Star Wars was in the theater for, like, a year straight. That's true. It was a lot much longer, long, run. longer run. I went probably a good ten times on that first run. And then they did re-release it in September. Yep. They pulled kind of what Spider-Man did this year, where yep. it got a re-release. So I went and saw that again a couple times after it came out in the cheap seats. But uh, it was a phenomenal movie. And for me... When I think about the other Avengers movies, I mean, Infinity War is, I think, the best Avengers movie, okay. top to bottom. Yeah. So I, I can't say it's, it's, any, it's anything higher than five, because you know Infinity War is coming. We know Endgame's coming, right? Like, we've already put up Winter Soldier, but we even- We still have Guardians 1. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, two. 1 and 2. We still you know, have like, Spider-Man No Way Home. We used to have all the Spider-Man movies, right? Like, we got a lot of, a lot of heavy hitters coming. Yeah. So I think I'm going to put it at the end of our first column and go seven. Okay. What do you think? Um, I would probably say it's closer to eight, nine, but okay. I understand what you're saying because it is a, it is a milestone film. Yeah. It is a, because we be, like, obviously X-Men was an ensemble film, right? But this was different. We brought together different movie properties and they, as much as I, I'm, I'm, you know, through like, you know, Grinding teeth, Joss Whedon managed to nail this one. Um, yeah, uh, it had led it right directly into Agents of Shield, uh, which I yeah. spoke about earlier. Like, like everything about it set up the rest of the MCU perfectly. Yeah, um, we got reintroduced uh, to Bruce Banner with Mark Ruffalo instead of Edward Norton, uh, which was great. Um, we got a much more connected Hawkeye and Scarlet. Wi- uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Black Widow. So, yeah. I like it, and you know what? I'm okay with it being at seven. I really am. I really am. Like, I would say, if I had to guess, I would probably just, if I threw it off the cuff, I would say eight. But I get it. Seven's a good one. And it may it may bump down as it, we get going. It's possible as we keep moving. Sorry, guys. Uh, it, it's possible we may move it down a little bit. But I, yeah, let's, let's start, let's, let's start it off at seven. Yeah. Okay. Are we just calling this Avengers one or are you going to do the full, I'll do the, the, the Mar- Marvel's V Avengers? And of course, I don't know if you remember the very first trailer opening with Nine Inch Nails. We're in this together now. Yeah, that was a weird time, as I was saying, in movie trailers. Because remember Captain America, the first Avenger, had a Tool song. Yep. Oh, would you switch it back? Had, uh, had 46 and 2 as the trailer song, which was so weird. Because it didn't fit the movie. In the slightest, but it still fucking kicks ass because it's 46 and 2. 46 and two from Maybe one of Tool's most famous songs. Uh, Enema is one of the best 
Like, that that album is amazing. Industrial rock album. Yeah, yeah that, that that album's awesome. And like I would have seen it I could have seen it for Iron Man, but for Captain America? Yeah. Well, and, especially with and they had I believe it was it was it Soundgarden that did the Live to Rise, the theme song? I think so. The credit song? Yeah, you're right. Because, yeah. yeah, like, movies don't... I mean, like, the Spider-Man movies have been doing that over the credits, but, yeah. like, those movies didn't do that. They went right to roll credits. Yep. They didn't have those post-credit yep. tags and stuff like that. Yep. And it was Live to Rise by fucking Soundgarden right as soon as you roll credits. What a weird time in movies. We have what, to remember... Because you've been also, seeing that meme of the what if it ended in 2007 and yeah, Lincoln Park Lincoln over the... Park, uh, over, yeah. Those, that was the era these first movies were being made in. Yeah. And it, it ref- you can tell. Yeah, Hollywood was still coming off of the hard rock for everything. Yeah. You know, all of their films. I, instead of just going back to... I think with... with was it Silvestri that did this? Yeah, Silvestri's the Avengers film. When he nailed the first Marvel, the Avengers film, that became like, okay... We're okay with it being symphonic again. We we're okay with having Star Wars type story, you know, yeah. leading it rather than it being everything you because we're coming off of Michael Bay's fucking yes, Lincoln Park was everywhere and Green Day was everywhere. Like yeah, yeah, a lot of licensed music and stuff. And yeah, it was. You know who I blame? I blame two thousand one's uh, Mission Impossible two, that oh, horrible Metallica song. That is just such one of hey, that is hey, one of the worst hey. movies I've ever. Seen. I disappear. That's the song. I disappear. Oh, man. And. So I haven't told Dennis this, but I want to pitch it to him. Okay. He's never seen any Mission Impossible movie. What? Not a single one. And I'm like, Dennis, next spring, when Dead Reckoning comes out, that's July. That May through June, we should do a watch along with Dennis and then re- do pull a ranking episode. Okay. Do the first six as one episode. Okay. And then do one episode to talk about the new movie. Okay. I think that would be a, a great one-two punch next summer. And we just just get all that out, and we do watch parties with the discords and stuff, so everybody's watching along with us. Sure. And then we discuss on the podcast what we're thinking. Okay. I think I think that'd be a great time. I'm okay with that. I love you know me. I love Mission Impossible. S- that franchise the is first one so was, good. First one was mad. Two was awful. But three onward has been basically once Tom Cruise was like, no, 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 I'm producing yep. this shit. It got awesome. Yep. It's coming out of my pocket, so I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be good. It's been good since. I mean, think about three. Philip Seymour Hoffman. One of the greatest villain performances ever. Yeah. And it's feel, when you say Philip Seymour Hoffman is going to be the major villain, you're like, of an action film? And But I buy it. It works. He's great. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but Sylvester's Avengers musical score, it was a weird time. I'm okay with it at seven. I yeah. Mean, where we're at now, it may move. It may. It's not going to move up because I'm thinking, of, like, at the top of my head, my top films. It's going to be hard for it to move upward, but it may move downward. Yep. So maybe we push back. So, yeah. All right. So now we're on to phase two. Phase two. And the first movie of phase two was the last Iron Man movie, Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. So, Fusion, this one's yours. Uh, what's the director? Shane uh, Black. Shane Black. Iron Man 3. Taking is... on the Extremis arc from yep. the comics. Yep. The Warren Ellis Extremis story, um, which also played a big role in the, um, throughout the uh, Agents of Shield's first season. So. Yeah, and they've brought back, like we said, Ben Kingsley multiple times now. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say I thought it was a good film, uh, but when I think about it, it is probably at the back end of the first half, so it's probably anywhere between. It's probably for me, it's between 14 and 16 for me. That's what I was going to say. My 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 breaker for you there is it a better watch than Thor, or is it a lesser watch than Thor? I'm going to say it's a lesser watch than Thor. So we'll put it at 16. 16, I'm okay with. 16, it is. Yeah. So our break-even point right now, for those of you listening at home, is uh, Thor and Iron Man 3 are the middle of the list. If it's above or below either of those movies, that's our even point. That's our Luis Mendoza line. You, Mendoza line. I figured you'd get that reference. Yes, the Mendoza line. I used to watch Nano 210. Switch your back. <laughs> All right. And I remember Sports Illustrated used to have that Mendoza line, the... The yeah. tracker, so yep. you could tell like where they, they would use that as the as the average cutoff line in the Big Ten. That's Big Iowa. Ten. Iowa is generally the Mendoza line of the Big Ten. We are. We spent the whole day yesterday watching college football. We watched uh, Iowa score seven points, but not get a touchdown. Not get a t- That is probably going to be a group. win and win and win. That might be that. Yeah. The last time it happened was two thousand or nineteen ninety nine. West Virginia lost to Syracuse thirty to seven. Yep. They lost with just scoring seven that way. They scored three times. But without only, a touchdown. No, without a touchdown and only scored seven two, points. A field goal and two safeties. Two safeties. 
and they won. I don't. I, that legit may be the first time it's ever happened. Probably, it's possible. It's possible. Just to only score seven, to only score seven without a touchdown. Yeah, and still win. And still win. It's bonkers. It was a defensive game, man. But hey, we were watching a few games, and I will say the ending of U of H UTSA oh, was a hell of an overtime game. What a great game! Oh man, what a great, a great game. ending. Um, so yeah, sixteen. I'm I'm cool with Iron Man three. There, it's a good film, but it's like there's just so many films that you just beat it so yeah yeah like it's got still got some great moments like okay. that final fight sequence with all the different iron man suits it's so cool yep but it just kind of breaks you're like why didn't you bust up the suits earlier it's got some of that shane black of like didn't really think the plot all the way through there did you yeah exactly you just wanted to go for the cool yep. which is fine that's yep. your style but come on yep. take it through a little bit okay so now the next one is probably going to be where we figure out the bottom of this uh thor the dark world thor the dark world uh so below above or below incredible hulk for you below incredible hulk i agree and it was one of the worst movie experiences i've had in modern in the mcu and i will say this it's not the movie's fault the 3d conversion okay so bad so you know what you just popped up a memory in my head now it's, it's a quick aside I don't know if you watched Thor, the first Thor film in 3D, but it was actually really good in 3D. It was just, you had to go to the right 3D. You had to go to the right place. Because if you went to the real 3D, yeah. you're fine. You went to the Dolby, it was dog shit yep. because everything was super dark. Yep. Their lenses were so dark. The only thing you could see was Thor's cape. Yep. It was awful. But I, it was a real 3D. I went to go see Thor in the first film, and I loved it because like the way they did the... And the I bet Asgard looked amazing. The Asgard looked beautiful. The Bifrost... Everything about like the bridge, the rainbow bridge, every like you know to to the Bifrost, everything was beautiful about 3D, and it was subtle. It wasn't like in your face every single minute, bullets coming at you. Things. And like I bet that. those Dutch angles probably actually look decent in 3D. Yeah. yeah. But Thor two. Thor two. I didn't watch it in 3D. Not a great movie. I had a, by the time I got to Thor, I re- had already been burnt out on 3D. Yeah. Point. It was, was like, a weird time. I was like, I'm done. You know, Harold and Kumar Christmas was in 3D. Uh, the year before Thor came out in 2011, I was like, yeah, I'm starting to get burnt out. Thor was like, okay, it wasn't bad, but I just didn't have a need to go pay for 3D. Yeah. The last movie that did it right for me was Dread. Dread? Dread 3D is the the last movie of that era you need to buy and watch in 3D because that how- was a slow-mo effect in 3D yeah. with the smoke and everything coming through the screen. Awesome. And when he pushes her out the window and she falls to her death in 3D, you're like, Oh my God, that's cool. How have we not gotten a, a Dread sequel? I don't know. Carl Urban is on top of the fucking world. Yeah. He's, you would and, think and they'd be they haven't for followed him. up. It's superheroes. It's dark. It's R rated. Yep. It's Carl Urban, yep. who clearly wants to do the role. It's like Henry Cavill with Superman. What are you doing? He's Henry fucking Cavill, yep. and he wants to do Superman. Well, it's one of those things where we have a whole, f- like, a generation of actors that, if it's a pro, like, an IP that they love, they're, they'll wait for it because. Carl Urban's been waiting for what eight years yeah. now for for Star Trek Four, like, and they're gonna do it. They're gonna start filming at the end of this year. They've been waiting for it for like. Four he loved. Days. He loved being bones. Yeah, but they. they but they. He's a nerd. But they say I. I'm a fan, and I can't wait. Henry Cavill's like, whenever you're ready, I want to talk Superman. And it's like, what are we doing here, guys? Dread. He. He's. You know, in a in a Vanity Fair interview over. If you go to YouTube, he talks about how he loved the character doing Dread. He just loved the film, the story. It's like. He gets to kind of fill that outlet with the boys. Give him fucking dread. You're gonna make money if you put it. If not, put it on fucking HBO Max. You know you don't like, have to. Where with streamers? What? Yeah. Where's your streaming movie dread? Yeah, yep. Like it's the perfect movie for that because yep. it doesn't need to be. Nope. Tons of millions of dollars. They made the movie cheap. Yeah, I think it was like forty like, some million, some, yeah, and that uh-huh. was with with the marketing and stuff. Like yep. that was the top, the total budget. Yep. So I'm like, where's the sequel? I think Netflix owns the rights. So I'm like, yeah. Netflix, what you doing? Yeah, they're needing IPs over there. Um, circling back, Thor Dark World. <laughs> so, I'm going to go 28. 28. Okay, I'll hand this over to you. I'm perfectly fine with it being 28. So what's his name? Christian, uh, Chris Eccle? It was Christopher Ellickson was Ele- the Christopher, Christopher Ellickson. was the bad guy. Yes. Malekith. He never speaks well of Thor to the Dark World. It's just a shitty movie with it's, a shitty script. He ha- Well, he hated the production side of it, too. Well, and he had to go through a lot of makeup, too, yeah. like to make it look good, because they did do good practical effects. Like, yeah. other than that, yeah. there was nothing cheap about that movie. No. no. Like, the effects were good. Like, the, the elves and stuff, like, that was, like, actual practical effects. And, like, yep. that's hard to sit through, yep. you know? Um, yeah. Story wasn't great. Um, yeah. 
Hiddleston was still stand out, you know, like when Frigga dies and he loses it in his cell and stuff. Like, that shit still hits. Yeah. Like, even in the bad moments, it's still emotionally really resonating. Well, Tom Hiddleston is one of those actors that can convey so many different emotions all at once. Like, I think that scene in the first episode of Loki where he watches himself die. Yeah. Uh, he just... And with with the Asgardian theme playing over the top. Asgardian, and yeah, and like, but just to see his face... He conveys fear. You see fear. him go through six movies of art yeah, in five, five minutes. Yeah, and he just goes through fear, anger, sadness, frustration, madness. Like, you just see it all happen within a second. You're like, And then, bam, Whoa. we're back to him being the Loki that died in Infinity yeah. War. Yeah. All of a sudden. which is And it it was a way you... One of those moments where you're like, well, how are they going to pull this off, right? He's a Loki from Avengers, and now he's in this movie. But, like, we've seen him go through all this growth. Now he's a different character. But then you're like, oh, no. Hiddleston is just that good. Yeah. We're, we're back in. You know, yeah. I think people. I think people liked uh, Hiddleston's Loki. I think people started. They liked him in the first Thor. People started really liking him in Avengers. But I think out of Thor: Dark World, we take that's where people fell in love with Loki. They 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 loved his character because immediately after Thor: Dark World is where he showed up at Comic Con as Loki, wasn't it? Was I it, think was, so. Was it? Was it after or before? I can't remember which way. But it was a long time ago, over ten years. Yeah, but I remember that, that if you go watch that clip on YouTube, like the entire Hall H is just. Nine years. They're losing their shit as soon as the yeah. lights go down and it comes up and there he is. You know, I think, awesome. it, I think it was for promotion of the Dark World, but I think people realize, I think the world loves Hiddleston's Loki. You know, yeah, he needs to be in everything. Yeah, get him in stuff. And I'm glad we're getting season two. So, um, but but that was probably one of the few positives out of that film. I didn't even like Natalie Portman in that movie. It just felt Lady like Sif me. was dope, but Lady Sif God. has been to- totally underutilized. If they ever do Thor, five, Thor five, she needs to be a part of that movie. Jamie Alexander is actually pretty funny. And she actually loves playing Lady Sif. Yeah, she just doesn't have much to do. She just yeah, she's just like Give her a dope call. Asgardian Wakandan tech arm like Bucky gets, but give it some uh, Asgardian like tech and more magic or whatever, and you're like, oh shit, that's gonna be fucking awesome. Like she has a sword, but it produces a shield, a magical shield. Yeah. I'm Something cool. like that, like like the Coulson hand, you yeah, know, when he pops out the with the light shield and yep, stuff. Yep. Like, come on, tell me that wouldn't be fucking awesome. I we need I, I you, we've always you and I have always said this. We need more Lady Sif in the MCU. We need her. Or, like, or here's the thing: she, her joke is she want she gives Thor a name. She's gonna go by now Sif the blank. She's gonna say like the Winter Warrior, and he's like, I, I think that's been taken because <laughs> he knows Bucky. Yeah, he knows Bucky. Um, so there you go. Um, she should be in Thor five. With with Portman's Jane Foster passing away in love, unless she comes back as Valkyrie, she could, which she did, and she may do that. But it'll be, but then if she could come back, why can't Heimdall come back? I'm, my my thing is, I, the reason I would say so here's my quick pitch for Thor five. Okay, you set up, or maybe she's not even in the movie. Okay, maybe it's a post credit scene where okay. she comes back. So okay. you you do a buddy cop movie where Thor teaches Hercules about the you know that how far humanity's come and that they don't need gods anymore. Okay. Zeus sent you to kill me because he wants to rule Earth or whatever, but fuck him. Humanity's awesome. You just need to be a hero. Go on. So he teaches Thor, Her- Hercules how to be a hero. Then Zeus sends Ares and the other Greek gods to, to take out Thor and Hercules, and then they beat his family, send him packing. Hercules takes the Thunderbolt back, which Thor still has right now, and sends him back with it. Okay. Or the Asgardians have it. Sure. Sends him with the Thunderbolt, and then Hercules is just off having adventures, doing whatever. And Zeus is left to deal with the fallout. And okay. Thor's still being a hero and awesome. Then they're get they're all their new Asgard, you know, sharing a drink, you know, about, you know, you know, defeating the Greek gods once and for all. And all of a sudden, Frigga shows up, his mom. And he's like, I could only do this once. So I didn't want to do it before I had to. Yeah. And then that's when she brings uh Jane Foster back. Because we know Frigga had a lot of magical ability. Yeah. So if anyone was going to have a way to at least appear from the afterlife, from it'd be Valhalla, her. yeah, yeah. But having her be like, I could bring someone back. Okay, I just didn't know who. Now and I it's know. Jane, Fo- like Jane Foster showed up. Of course, I have to send her back as the first Valkyrie since you know the fall of the Valkyries. She has to be the first one, and yeah. she makes her a new Valkyrie. Okay, because we have the idea of Valkyrie. Our current Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson, is retiring as a Valkyrie, right? Yeah, she's just she's the last of yeah, them. She's the last, and of she's them. now the king of the Asgardians that yep. are still living. So there needs to be a, a Valkyrie, Valkyrie like, at least a Valkyrie present on on. on yeah, on and like I could see Frigga bring Asgard. Frigga and Odin bringing her. You know, but she, the only back. catch is she doesn't remember being Jane Foster. I could that yeah, 
and her. But then, and then, is, and then in the in the next movie, yeah. or the next series, or whatever it is, because I would actually like to see a series maybe there, you know, because that way Hemsworth could just slim down a little bit because yeah. he's getting older. So, uh, just and then having her remember who she is in little brief snippets and like waking up to being Jane Foster again, sure. and then you know getting back with Thor, unless they're gonna finally do something with Sif and Thor, but I don't think you have to. No, you don't have to, but I think fans are quietly clamoring for that. Like just or Sif and Valkyrie. That's true. Who knows? Yeah. We haven't we have explored nothing with Sif. No. And we know Valkyrie's by. So. And unfortunately the Warriors three are they're also dead. they're all in Valhalla as well. So. Like I would love to see Sif like coming to terms with that of like literally all my friends are dead and Thor's off God knows fucking where. So she's got nobody. So would you okay, so quick quick another quick aside. If you had to choose between going forward with Armored Wars, which it sounds like they're not big fans of doing this show because it's not on their slate of production, okay? Yeah, it's it's been it's, it's, it's been ru- it's been talked about for a while, but they never they're not showing it but off. It's, it's not anywhere on Disney Plus Day. But on the last at the last Disney event, they did not bring it up at all. Like a lot of those shows from last one, they didn't like. Of course, they had to scrap a lot of their Star Wars slate because yeah. Gina Carano being an idiot. Yep. So yeah, and the Rogue Squadron keeps getting pushed. Because yeah. Wonder Woman two fell on its face. Yep. So I hear that instead of Armor Wars, you get a Lady Sif show or like an Asgard show, a new Asgard show. Heck yeah! Okay. Adventures of the New Asgardians. Yep. And do like a little one-off episode. I, 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 I will, I'll even episode. I'll even make Sif, it better. Sif. I'll even tie it all together in because Feige loves Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones, a big chunk of her season is introducing mis- crimes she has to solve in New Asgard. That'd be awesome. And that's how and you'd set it in like as like a mystery, yeah. Where she's get she's the outsider, yep. You know, like yep. you come in, you like know? Twin Peaks almost, like yeah. Like you do a Twin Peaks type of weird, like she's like she's super powered, which she's as and, strong. And, and like as Guardians, that's the other part. The Guardians don't know that. Yeah, they don't so know. So all that. of a sudden, like they're getting you know, like oh, she's a human. We're gonna have to worry about breaking her, or whatever. Yep. Someone tries to attack her, and she fucking throws them through a wall. Yep. And everyone would be like. Okay. Yeah, so she's not afraid of Asgardians, but that's a good way. Like, you know, you could have a three or four episode arc of her having to go to New Asgard and kind of create like a Twin Peaks kind of weird thing. And it kind of fits the alias theme of what we're, you know, of what the original comic was about. And you can, it can push you into a new Asgard. I think we need to have a new Asgard show. Yeah, we and need you something could, that's set in that world. And you don't have to have Thor show. He could be on a video call talking with them or something. Yeah. You know, just so you could get a, a you know a shot of of Chris Hemsworth involved at some point. But I think like Lady Sif and Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie can lead that show. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I think that'd be a good time. And you could even bring back Darcy. She stays in Heck, New Asgard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she'd have to be an honorary as guardian at some point. Yeah, you know. So okay, all right. So we, all right, we, we talked. It, we managed to do much more talking about out around Thor: well, Dark because World. Because we already figured out what the next movie was, and that's Winter Soldier of, yeah. chronologically, and that's already number one. Yep. So okay. Winter Soldier is already on the board. Yep. That's at number one. We don't need to talk about Winter Soldier anymore because we've talked about this show ad nauseum in many different episodes over the years of uh, the last two years. Uh, so yeah. So which means we are up to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. Volume one. one. Okay, man. I'm going to say it is top 10. Okay. I'm going to put it at number nine. I wholeheartedly agree with that because it is a more fun movie. Iron Man has shown its age a little bit in some, yes, spots, some spots, but it's still really, really fun because yep. Robert Downey Jr. is so good. But, man, Guardians of the Galaxy came out of fucking nowhere with that, you know, the uh, blue suede. Well, no, it's not the it's blue band. The song, the trailer song. Oh, uh, Mr. Blue, Mr. Blue Skies, LFO. No. Hang on. Let me look this up. Guardians of the Galaxy trailer song. More than a feeling. No. I think that's not more than a feeling. That's Kansas. What the fuck? Uh, Boston's more than a feeling. Yeah, Boston's more than a feeling. That's going to be stuck in your head now. Hooked on a feeling. Hooked on a feeling hooked by Blue a, Suede. Blue, Blue Suede hooked on a feeling. I was thinking Blue Suede shoes. I'm like, wait, that's that, wrong. That's it's, Elvis. Come on. Yeah, but Blue Suede is the band. Yes. Hooked on a feeling was the song. Yes. That trailer blew everyone away. Like, what the what the fuck is now, this movie? Now, I want to I do a quick tangent on this because when they announced they were going to do this film two years before in 2012, I told the internet, I was like, guys, I know you guys are getting onto this. Because it was weird. I told you guys, I'm a big comic book fan. I'm going to tell you guys, you're going to fucking love this show. Like, you're going to love this movie. Why? Why? 
it's just different. You know, it's it's goofy in space. It's going to work because that's how this iteration of Guardians works. You know, the original core, a lot darker, right? But then they rebooted over the years and they had closer to what the, the MCU version is. It wasn't completely that roster. But I said, Star-Lord is a goofy character. You know, he's a Tony Stark of space, but he's goofy because he's not a genius. And they've made that out. Sure enough, that first trailer, when that first trailer hit, you're like, everyone's like, holy shit, I'm going to watch this. I said, I fucking told you guys. And then the soundtrack, all the old songs. They just nailed James. It was James Gunn just showing up yeah. and be like, look at what I got. Yeah. Like, it was a great movie. I remember I remember the Honest trailer. I think it was, uh, might have been that movie or might have been Ant-Man where they were like, witness a, a studio drunk on its own power giving you a talking tree, a talking a raccoon. Talking tree. Yep. Like, Literally, Vin, Vin Diesel filmed, he, he recorded for like 10 hours just saying I am Groot in different tones and inflections. That's it. Yeah. And and it and it works. Yeah. Super Bradley well. Bradley Cooper, when he was cast as the voice of Rocket, I was like, I don't think that's gonna work. And then we saw the trailer. I'm like, okay, he, it's going to work. And then you go watch him the YouTube clips of him doing the, the voicing. He is Rocket Raccoon. I yeah. just I mean like there's just so many things you could say. Ta- James Gunn brilliant job with this production like they were gonna this was the opening to marvel in space the galactic side of the mcu right and they were gonna have to really do a good job rather than going completely serious they just went completely funny and they and they they stuck the landing it's but i will say this if if this movie did not stick the landing we would have never gotten thor ragnarok because disney and marvel would have been too scared to go too goofy yeah I will say this though, Guardians two Guardians two has the better finale. It does. It does have the, the better, better Act three. Yeah. But Acts one and two of Guardians are just super fun. Yeah, yeah. So I have no I'm going to say number nine. number nine for the first Guardians film. That's me. It's right. a, one of my favorite ones. Uh, one of my favorite MCU productions. Yeah. All right. Since I did Thor and we already have Winter Soldier up, this one's you. Uh, it's my turn. Okay. It's G U A. I think. I never, I never spell Guardians right. Just like that. Guardians, O T G, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Which, of course, means we're up to our next Avengers movie. Yep. That is Avengers: Age of Ultron, the movie where Joss Whedon shit himself basically in terms of the story, uh, and tried to pull a wash with a number of characters. We did get Hulkbuster out of it. That is true. That fight sequence is top tier. Yeah. Like it's right up there with the best of the MCU. But man. The behind the scenes stuff of that with Joss Whedon and Elizabeth Olsen, and it's like it's bad, and it doesn't age, it ages even worse. I think, but James Spader is so good. God, James Spader as like just a, a snarky Ultron. God, yeah, it just works. I'm gonna say this about Age of Ultron. Now that we're what nine years from eight eight years, it would have been 2014. So eight, eight years, eight, eight, we're eight years out of the out of, out of it hitting theaters. I think it's. Better than it's better than I remember it. Yeah, it's certainly not back half of the MCU. No, but it is most definitely not a top ten movie. No. Uh, I'll let you call this one. Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. May twenty fifteen. I'm gonna hand over the mark the sharpie to you, and I'm gonna see where you where you place this to start. I mean, for that Hulkbuster alone, I want to say it's fourteen. Okay. Um. The Avengers films, all four of those films, are worthy of being in the first half. Yeah, I, I, none of them are bad. Now, what I liked about this one was we got a lot of tie-ins and callbacks with uh, the party at Stark Tower, uh, Avengers Tower. Part, sorry, uh, Shield. Steve just like lightly lifting the hammer and not touching. It. The, when Vision hands the hammer off, I'm like, what the fuck? I That's remember awesome. the, the theater just lost it when he yeah. when he goes, oh, we have to go. Mm-hmm. The theater just lost it. Um, we got the introduction of Vision, obviously. I th- I would say the biggest thing, the biggest problem with this, obviously, is Joss Whedon's uh, pacing and the, the approach to it. Like how they find Natasha's the, just stupid. Yeah. Um, but also, I, I I was upset with how they handled the death of Quicksilver. I thought it was... Why'd you have... You didn't have to He didn't have him. to die. No. He didn't have to die. Yeah. You just wanted to kill somebody. Yeah. That's that's really it. There was a, they needed to have someone die. If you were going to kill someone, because of how much he was in the movie, narratively, it should have been Hawkeye. You know? Like, he was in the movie a lot. Yeah. He's he's held up as the linchpin. Yep. That's who you kill in the story. Well, we, we, I, I, 
through the movie, I thought, oh, he's gonna die. Hawkeye's yeah. gonna be the one. Like to if die. you'd have known he was, if you knew he was dead, yeah. you'd see the foreshadowing. Yeah. You know, his wife talking about, oh man, if you're, you have to be the one to hold these people together, I'm scared. Yeah. You know, him being the inspiration for for Wanda to come out and like be a hero. Yep. And then have him die. Yeah. That'd have been way more impactful than. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Well, it gets me mad about that. And I like Aaron Taylor. No, Johnson. no. And we saw Bullet Train. He was did, awesome. He was that that movie Bullet Train is why he got Craven. And I told you I I, I read a, a Hollywood report that the that the studio saw Sony Sony had saw the roles of Bullet Train and they were like, okay, yeah, we'll we'll guy. bring him in. We'll bring him in. He he can be our Craven. That said, um, yeah, I, I I'm okay with it being at fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. It is. There's a lot to like. There's a lot to dislike. And I think because of the whole Joss Whedon saga, people people get a little rough with rating it, you know? All right. So one left in phase two. Okay. We're up to our last phase two movie. And that is 2015's Ant-Man. So Ant-Man, one of the weirder ones. Yep. It's a heist movie. Yep. And it's like the score is very much heist movie. Like, it's that the theme, it feels like it's an Ocean's Eleven kind of theme, you know, like it's got that great, you know, like a little beat to it. And of course, Paul Rudd's Paul Rudd. It's got some great moments with uh, Michael Douglas. Yep. With the, my days of breaking in and stealing shit are done. Like, Scott, I need you to break into a place and steal, steal some, some shit. shit. Like, great, great character beats. Of course, Evangeline Lilly turns out to be an anti, anti-vax weirder. So, Whoa. who knows where, if she's going to continue to be Wasp. Yeah. I don't even know. We don't know. We don't know. But uh, where would where do you think we should put Ant okay. Man? I do like Ant Man. Hard to say it's a better than that's, Captain America: First Avenger. I really like. Now we're getting into the hard part. This is where it becomes hard for me. I thought Ant Man was surprisingly good because yeah. originally it's Ed, fun. Edgar Wright was apparently originally well, he was originally the director on the film, and then Peyton Reed took over. I was very nervous when Edgar Wright stepped out. Yeah, because it was creative differences yeah. publicly. Yeah, he had he had publicly slammed Marvel, saying like. They have a way of doing things, and I don't like. They have a formula. He specifically said formula. I'm like, oh no, that's we're getting to that point already. Uh, but going to the theater, it was a good film. That said, I'm probably gonna stick it at 17. Honestly, I agree because the villain does not stand out as no. much. Darren Cross doesn't stand out. It's the hero cast is great. Yep, it's got a fun story. Good emotional hook with his daughter. You know, yep. even the the daughter, like the 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 ex wife and his and his her. Husband, husband, yeah. Like the cop part of the story, yeah. Because his partner is really funny too. Yep. I can't remember. I'm blanking on the actor's name, but he was Julius in Remember the Titans. Re- yeah, and he's also he was in the first season of uh, of The Wire, I believe. Yeah, he was in. He's been in a lot of those kind of kind of those roles, and he's very funny. Like yep. their their dynamic is great in the few scenes they have. Yep. The the crew. Um, I forget their names now. All of Luis. Them. What yeah, the actor? I don't remember his name, man. Oh my god, I I'm know gonna- it. I'm I know gonna it. Die. I'm because gonna... he's awesome in The Martian and a bunch of other movies he's in. Michael Pena. There you go. Michael Pena, even the Russian dude. Yep. You know, uh, and their other guy, the Baskin Robbins don't play. Oh, it's T- yeah, and the Ti was in the yeah, yeah. Ti Ti. You know, like the, the rapper Ti guy... was in. Uh, yeah. I always forget his name. David uh, Das Malshian. Das Malshian. Is he the guy that plays yeah. the Russian? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was Polka Dot Man. Yeah, he plays Polka Dot Man. Yeah. yeah, and he was fucking hilarious as Polka Dot. Yeah, Man. he's great as a comic relief kind of side character. Yeah. And everything about that movie works except the villain for me. Yeah. It's kind of like like Iron Man 3. I really like the twist with the villain and Ben Kingsley. Okay. Because the Mandarin, before you know the twist, you're like, oh shit, this is it's fucking like, like, powerful. It's serious, yeah. Like, damn. Like, how, ben, how, Sir Ben fucking Kingsley. Kingsley as, as the Mandarin. And so you're thinking, okay, you're dealing with a goofy Tony Stark. He's going to have to get serious to push through this, right? And then the twist comes and it's Aldridge Gillian. And then Guy Pierce gets to ham it up at yep. the end. Like... I like that. Yeah. That for me lands a lot better, especially in the third act than Darren Cross does. Okay. So I don't mind Ant-Man going 17? To, at 17. Okay. I'm going to say this about Ant-Man. It's not a bad film. No, it's quite fun. But it's just, there's some, we're that, like you said, we're at the point where movies we, are going to start to drop because there's so many other good movies. Yeah. Well, as we talk ourselves into movies, we're going to have to bump things up and down. 17. Have no problem. <laughs> okay. So now we're on to phase three. Okay. 2016 rolls around. I believe this was November. Might have been the fall. Or was it summer that Civil Civil War happened? Uh, I think I thought it was summer. Might have been a summer movie, yeah. which is the introduction to Spider Man and Black Panther. Yes, Captain. It's basically Avengers 2.5 is the running joke, but it's the third Captain America movie. So Captain America 
Civil War. Russo Brothers once again. Yep. Great moments with Ant-Man and the whole Avengers crew. You know, the emotional beats with Rhodey getting hit with Vision's, you know, laser. And, I, of course, a great villain performance. Like, yeah. stand out. Or just a dude. Like, he's just a guy. And Baron, Baron Zemo. Zemo. Baron Zemo, like, for a guy, he plays such a pivotal role, like, as a backdrop villain. Yeah, because he's, he's the man in the shadows. When we knew, like, knowing Civil War, what it was, the story was about, you knew the villain wasn't going to play, like, a major front of the camera role consistently, so. I'm going to say it's eight for me on this list. I think it's a really fucking good movie. Yeah, I, I'm torn between six through eight, because, okay. like, do we bump Avengers and put it at seven? Or do we go Avengers 7, Captain Civil War 8? Okay. I'm going to say this. Avengers goes 8, Civil War goes 7. Yes, I agree. I have to say this because as much as I like that first Avengers film, and remember, I don't know, like, when we were in the uh, Rooster Teeth chat a long time ago. Oh, OG days. OG days. We would, you and I had talked about the Avengers being, like, for a long time, it was at the top, right? And then it's... Other movies are just over the years pushing it down and down and down. And it's not because of the value of that movie, but because the Russo brothers are fucking. They elevated the game. They they really did. I, I'm gonna say it's gotta be seven at, at Bump it. Okay. You're up next. Oh, it's me? Yeah, you're up next. I did oh, Ant Man. Yeah, I did Ant Man. On the very back of that, by the way, is a sponge. Uh yep. so yeah. Modern technology here. Yeah, I have no problem with saying Civil War at seven. When you really think about it, the uh, final fight between Bucky, Cap, and Iron Man is just fucking brilliant. And the Avengers goes to number eight. So here's our first bump, guys. And it's not because the Avengers is a bad film. It's just that Civil War is better. Okay. So, okay. switch her back, please. All right. So, after Captain America Civil War, then we get our first introduction into magic in the MCU. Oh, and that was the fall movie. Yeah. It was Doctor yeah, Strange, was Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch, coming into the MCU. <sighs> Basically, I will say this, it is, that's the knock on it, which is why it's definitely below it. It's a magic clone of Iron Man. Did it? Was this the first MCU film to be nominated or win an Oscar? I think yeah. I made a one for the special effects. The special effects is what I meant. Because it, it visually it's stunning. Yeah, gorgeous movie. Um, it is. It is. It is a blow for blow of Iron Man. Really, Which is almost why I want to say, put First Avenger at twelve and Doctor Strange at thirteen. Unless you want to bump it down. Unless we start no, bumping below. No, no. See the thing. Here's the problem with this is that I'm really trying to remember because. We're gonna ha- like if it goes lower, we're gonna have to do a triple triple bump with so all we're these. Gonna to, we're gonna start really stacking that, some movies. Stacking around. some movies. So, but I'm really thinking it is better than Age of Ultron, but it's not better than First Avenger. That's what I'm thinking. Do we move First Avenger up and put it at 13? See, because I'm still thinking we still have Guardians two. We have Guardians two is right. We have Guardians two next. We have Shang Chi. We have. Uh, Black Panther. I'm gonna fight some on Shang Chi. I know. I know you are. I'm waiting for that because we fought over it. You know, when it came out. Um, okay. So, ooh, boy. So this is a tough one. How do you feel about Doctor Strange? Do you think it's... A I top- still enjoy watching it. Okay. Like, the Mads Mikkelsen, he is too good of an actor for the role. It's not a great role, but he gives it his all and still makes the villain really good. Okay. But he's not as good of a villain as Hugo Weaving's Red Skull. You know? Because okay. Red Skull... While a mirror of Captain America is not just dark Captain America, sure. he's a different whole sure. character. Sure. Whereas Cag- uh, what was Cagliostro? The- no, Cagliostro was the name of the book. The book. Who was Cassilius? Cassilius. He doesn't really have much motivation other than my master lied to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he just doesn't have as good of a story. Well, remember now, we're also talking about... But Doctor Strange has the I've come to bargain theme, which is very inventive. Yeah, It's a really fun ending. Yeah. And very unique. Because he technically doesn't fight, but he beats the boss. He beats the final boss. He beats the the, the main villain. Here's the problem with this. Looking at the spaces we have open, we still have three Spider-Man movies, too. I know. 
So this is a tough one because mm-hmm. some movies are going to start dropping here. Um, if I really had to say this, you're probably going to think I'm crazy. I say Ant Man, Iron Man three, Thor, and Age of Ultron each move down a spot, and it go and Captain America probably goes down a spot. And well, no, I could say Doctor Strange below Captain America. Yeah, we'll go with that at fourteen and bump the bump everybody else down, down one. Yep, sounds good. You want me to go get a paper towel? No, we got we got a cool little sponge. Okay. Here. So we're we're going with the big the big drop here. Yes. So we're working our way well through phase three. We're gonna do a little simplification here, please. Yeah, we're gonna shorthand it. Because at this point, you'd be crazy. Yeah, we're gonna have to move a lot around. Ultron there. So you're cool with Doctor Strange at fourteen. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Or do you feel Captain? No, I, I would put Doctor Strange below because I would much rather watch First Avenger. Yeah. When it comes down to my tiebreaker, it's what do I want to go put on the TV right now? Now, I'm going to say this. Even though it is a blow for blow of Iron Man, it's not a blow. It is a really, really good film. It's got a better final act than yeah. Iron Man. Iron Man it really turns into beam in the sky, fight the big dude. Yeah. But RDJ's performance is just that standout. I don't know if Cumberbatch is quite that good. Well, he also was, and being, we also knew Cumberbatch was was that good. Like yeah. Robert Downey Jr., that was everyone's like the mainstream audience's reintroduction to. Oh, that dude really was always that good. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. We missed out on fifteen years of that guy. Yeah. While well, we all like everybody in the UK loved Cumberbatch, yeah. and you know his Sherlock series was huge in the US yeah. as well. So it wasn't like he was he had disappeared for eight nine exactly. years. You know, so. there wasn't that like yeah. there wasn't the meta around I mean, that movie. Terrence Howard got three million dollars, while Robert Downey Jr. got what like eight hundred thousand a million dollars. Yeah, it was a stark difference. Yeah. Pun intended. Uh, and like. It was his redemption story, you know, like the, it was the, it was the first attempt, right, with Iron Man, and the fact that they nailed it that well out of the gate, yeah. like that's what elevates it for me. Plus okay. the soundtrack and the, even the graphics hold up. Yeah, you know. But yes, it, Doctor Strange is a beautiful movie, and when I think about these movies here, I would say of of this cluster, I really like Thor and Ant Man. Okay, Iron Man three and Age of Ultron were good movies, but Doctor Strange was the better film. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I agree. All right. All right. All right, so we're moving on. We're down to Guardians Volume 2. Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Is it better or worse than the first? Not I think it's got the better... I got the way better. It's like vastly better third act. Vastly better third act. Really fun opening. But I'm going to say Guardians 1 is a better film overall. It does drag in the middle. Yeah. The char- like Once the characters basically all start yelling at each other, yeah. it gets very... like. What are we doing? Yeah. Why are we sitting here? Yeah. When it goes to ego, when they when they go to ego for it a little really bit, slows down. It slows down a lot, and then I think the only compelling part of that is you get a much a much more thorough introduction to uh, to Manta Mantis. Yeah, Sorry, to Mantis. Mantis, and then of course Yondu's death, like straight up. If you're not at least tearing up, if not outright bawling at the end of this movie, you don't have a soul. Yeah. Especially when they play father and son. I I'm tearing up fucking thinking about that. It's, it's yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you're 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 the story you know from the first film is that they kidnapped him, right? But then you learn, nope, they were kidnapping him to bring him back to his dad because And Yandu realized, Oh, I need to save this kid. Yeah. And yeah. he didn't know how to be a dad. I'm gonna take people are gonna see my bald head because I'm a little warm talking about all this. So I could go turn the air down. No, no, no. We're we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I just like I've been wearing the hat all day, so I'm gonna rock the bald head for a little bit. Um I'm going to say it's not as good as the first Guardian. So if I had to pick, it's somewhere between 11 and 12 for Guardians 2. Well, coming up next, we've got Spider-Man, Homecoming, Ragnarok, oh, Black Panther, Infinity War. This is where it's going to get tough, man. So do we just put it at 12? I'm okay with it at 12. Put it at 12? Yep. All right, I'll take this one. All right. Camera shot. We also get the tease of Adam Warlock, which we're getting in volume three. They're finally going to pay it off. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if you're a big, if you were an original Guardians fan like I was as a kid, you get introduction to the Guardians three thousand, like the original Guardians. Yeah. At the very end, like that's the uh, that's the end credits. Sylvester Stallone, Michael Rosenbaum. I want to say it was was that was that Ving Rhames? Yes, Ving Rhames, and do you know who the robot it, was? Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. There was another one. Yeah, uh, forget her name. Uh, she's 
She's in uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, That's it's uh, Michelle Yeoh. Michelle Yeoh, yeah. Yeah, she sense. she's the other captain. Yep, the other yeah. captain. Yeah. So and we sh- Michelle Yeoh is in the MCU, guys. We completely forget that. It's now crazy. That just bring uh, her back. Yeah. Bring her back in more shit. I mean, everything, everywhere, all at once is probably the best multiverse movie I've ever watched. On a, it's, it's so good. It's such a great story. But like, I'm thinking. I should like, have brought that with me. I have it on digital. So if Jackie just wants to watch that, we might watch there that. There you go. There you go. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if she's seen it. Okay. Um. So yeah, Guardians two. I'm okay with that at twelve. All right. So switch her back. Okay. Let's go back. So next up, as I alluded to, Spider Man Homecoming. Which is Spider Man's introduction into the MCU is as full on. Yep. His course showed up in Civil War, and this is the first time we get. First time we also get to see Vulture in live action. Yep. By played none other than Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. And that with one standout scene with that tension ratcheting in the car. Oh god. When he realizes that he, he realizes it's, it's it's Peter Parker Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, and he like t- pulls him aside. Yeah. He's like, like I res- I respect you, I like you. If you break with my kid's heart, I will kill you. Yeah. You're like, oh shit. Well, Michael Keaton is a phenomenal actor. I think Birdman showed his range. Yeah. Because I think, because, you know, he was Batman. He did a bunch of fun. Well, he, he, did, he had done that kind of thriller killer yeah. before he was, uh, that movie where he's the, he's a tenant, plays like a tenant, like subleaser. Okay. And yeah. he just like terrorizes, like by just tiny little things. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Drives the other people insane. Yep. And it, like, oh yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. He would totally be a great villain. Well, people, people it's funny because, you know, we talked about, Breaking Bad and, and, and Vince Gilligan, like he has this idea that comedic actors are much better at drama, right? Um, and but in the eighties, Michael Keaton, outside before Batman, he was a comedic actor. That was yeah, he did you know, comedies like Mr. Mom, Mr. Mom, you know Johnny Dangerously, like that was his wheelhouse. And then he did Batman, but then after that, he immediately started going back into more of the comedy in the early nineties. But then you know in the late nineties, early two thousands, he started doing drama. And then Bird, I think Birdman showed. He's an older guy that can still be relevant, right? And I really liked him in this movie. He was awesome. I thought as Adrian Toomes, because his motivation is, you know what? The system's the system's leaning towards one group of people. Fuck them. We're going to take care of our own, you know? And I liked that. I yeah, liked that. it was a very believable story within the universe. Yep. The setup yep. was perfect. Yep. A villain that knows, most villains, most really good comic book villains believe what they're doing is right. Adrian Toomes in this movie knew he was do what he was doing was wrong, but he did it for what he felt was the right reason to take care of his friends and his family. Yeah. And I was like, okay. That's yeah. He it. wasn't out to end the world. No, no. He was just, I'm here to make money so I can provide for my family. And my, I, I, I paid all this money for my team and we get the introduction to damage control. There's just so many things out of this movie. Right. Um, man, this is a good film. I'm I agree. Through. I, is it better than the civil war? We got a lot of blank spaces. Okay. Do we bump up? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say move up Civil War to six and Homecoming goes at seven. Because it is better than the Avengers, it's better than the first Guardians film, it's better than Iron Man. I agree. Homecoming, it was a really good introduction of Spider Man into the MCU. I agree. And you end the film with the Ramones. Yeah. Hard to hard to top that. My turn, right? Right her up. So we're going with we're moving up. Civil War, you get the. Is this our first bump up? Yes. Our first bump up. It's our first bump up. I think it's worthy because it's the Russos and it's, what's his name? David Webb is the director of Spider Man? No, it's. uh... Not David Webb. Uh... John... John Watts. John Watts. Yeah. John Watts. Um, and you end, with, you end the movie with the Ramones. Yeah, like. And you're resetting him in, in, you know, in high school. Great casting with MJ and Ned, right? Like even his other love interest, um, blanking on her name, but uh, Toomes' daughter. Yep. Uh, Liz. 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 Liz, Liz, Liz. Jennifer Connelly as the voice of the AI. Martin right? Starr. Oh, yeah, Jennifer Connelly as, as fr- is not Friday. Um, she's just the AI, the suit AI, yeah, you know? AI, yeah. Ka- uh, maybe let's call her Karen? I think. Something like that. Gives her a name. Yeah. You know, like the, you know, the teachers, you know, like all that stuff, like... I can't. I can't lose another kid. Not I again. Can't lose. Not again. Like great little bit there, and of course, there. Then there's the weird behind the scenes drama with Silicon Valley and Martin Starr. So like, I don't want to get into that. Yeah. But it's 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 not nothing. And if he'd been a bigger star, I wonder what would have all happened. Especially with everything that happened also on that show with T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller. Yeah. Different T.J. Miller than the director of Deadpool, though. Yes. Isn't there multiple? There's two. No. Nope. One's the director. One's the actor. 
No, the director's not T.J. Miller. It's a Miller, but it's not T.J. Miller. Oh, yeah. It's a... Uh... Yeah, it's a Miller though. Yeah, it's yeah. A Miller. I get him confused. Yeah, it's not TJ because he directed a, Miller directed a Miller. Yeah, in Deadpool. Yep. So okay. So okay. So Silver War six, Spider Man Homecoming seven. Yes, I'm okay with that. So we're up to uh, a divisive one for our friend group, okay. Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok, because for you and I, this is top half of the MCU production line. Oh, not even. It's it's number five. For but me. what I mean is, a lot, several of our friends, it is probably. Bottom yeah, three they think films. it's one of the worst. Yeah, they think, yeah, and I don't understand it because I mean, they're like, Oh, it's a joke. I'm like, No, like, when when Odin dies, that's like that hits you, yeah, like Thor, like Hemsworth and and Hiddleston side by side coming to terms with their father's death. Yep, it's awesome, like, it is, it is incredible to watch. Plus, you get Kate Blanchett as the villain and Jeff Goldblum as a villain, and Hulk shows up, like. There's so much about this movie that's awesome. Valkyrie showing Carl up. Carl Urban amazing. is like a tertiary character. Yeah. And, and, he, still stands and out. he still has an emotional arc in that movie. Now, the only thing I will say about Taika Waititi's first go at this, he did the, the he did dirty the Warriors 3. Yeah, they got screwed. Like Zachary just, Levi deserved better. Yeah. Like because Zachary Levi came in through I forget the first actor that played him, uh, but he came in and he was a big comic book fan, right? Uh this was right before Shazam. And he was super excited. And it's like, really? That's it? I do this one scene and I'm dead? Like, okay. Yeah. But it's the, it's supposed to be showing the power of 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 uh, of her of of her on of Hela on Asgard. Uh, Asgard. Yeah. yeah. So um Thor Ragnarok, you said it's five for you or I think it's five? five. I think it's more again, it comes down to me, my my break even. Okay. I'd watch Ragnarok any single day. Okay. Civil War, I'll watch clips of. Ragnarok, I'll watch the whole movie. Okay. I'm gonna I'm okay with five. I'm okay with five. Because I don't see a need to I don't see a need to put it at six and bump everything down below that. I say five is it's a top five. Five film. it is for now. Because what it did was because you both you like if you if you had followed the backs like just the back productions of all the Marvel, you know, all of Marvel products, you knew that Chris Hemsworth was a great he was a very funny guy, right? And he got to show that in this movie. He got to show how funny he is. It was actually the Blu-ray material oh. for Civil War with the the Daryl. The, the Daryl, yeah, the, the when email he's stuff. Like yeah, Thor yeah. on Earth. Yep. Just fucking around. Like that's what got us Thor Ragnarok. Because yep. they were like, oh man, Hemsworth is hilarious. Well, and not only that, but like everyone, like Chris Evans, all those guys were like, he is funny. Like when they're talking about behind the scenes, like Hemsworth is a funny guy. And I'm trying to think the year before Ragnarok was the ghost, that awful Ghostbusters film, right? Yeah, I think so. That, that feels right. It might've been 2016. It was 2016, 2016 and then Ragnarok was 2017. So I think by that point they realized we need to put him in more funny roles. You know, yeah. Hollywood was like, he needs to have, he's not just a big meathead kind of guy. He's a funny guy because there were scenes in dark world, like when he's arguing with Loki and things where he's funny. Yeah. And I, and then obviously the those 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 shorts that you can go watch on Disney Plus now. It's just he's hilarious. He's great. Yeah. So I'm okay. I like it at five. It's it's. Yeah, I, I just feel like we backed ourselves into a major corner because I'm like, what the fuck do we put Endgame, dude? Oh boy. I think I think. I mean, gonna... is it going to be Infinity War, No Way Home, Endgame? I don't know. But like, if there's anything more, we got to bump shit down. Yeah. I think there's a big bump coming. I have a feeling. Yeah, we're that. gonna have to bump a lot of stuff. Sure. So we're still in phase three, which was fucking massive. Yes. We are up to, from again, another divisive one because of where, what we both think of the ending and how far it drags it down. That's Black Panther. Yep. Culturally, of course, a very resonant movie. Chadwick Boseman's portrayal is amazing. Yep. Even with Tisha Wright for all her off-the-camera stuff, great character. Um, Lupita Nyong'o? Nyong. Lupita Nyong'o. Uh, her oh god, what is her character's name? Jimmy. She's the love interest. Yeah. Um, his mom. Yep. Uh, is that Angela, Angela, Angela yeah. Bassett? Angela Bassett. Like the world they build is incredible with Wakanda. It is so cool. It 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 is the perfect interpretation for that character. Yeah. And then the third act just not only is not as good, it shits the bed. Yeah. It is. It was one of the first sentences where you can look back and go, oh yeah, uh, that's crunch. That's what happens when you crunch. That's what happens when you don't give people time is you get shit like the 
end of Black Panther. And now those people that have worked on that are like, oh yeah, they came to us like a month before the movie. Hey, completely redo it. Yeah. Like, well, of course it looks like shit. Well, because they were so pressed for Infinity War to get started. Yeah, they wanted it done. done. Yeah. And it's like, it needed time because if you go watch it, they're all over the place. Geography, like who's where, you have no idea how big it is, the scale, the scope. How does he get back up top? Who the fuck knows? It's insane. It makes no logical sense of why people show up when and where. The only thing that does is M'Baku showing up out of nowhere. Because that's a great character moment where he shows up to help because he was asked to. Yeah. And know? Winston Duke was fucking brilliant in this he movie. He was amazing. He was a standout character in this yes. movie. And those first two acts, it's got the same problem as Guardians, the first one. Those first two acts are incredible, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The fight, like, uh, Michael B. Jordan, the fi- their fight when he wins, you know, like, it's incredible. Right? Like, M- M'Baku, like, deciding to, you know, bring you know, him back to life, basically. Yeah. Very impactful. But then immediately it goes from an eight or nine movie out of 10 to a six. That finale is just, oh, it's rough. It is very, very rough. And then it ends on a super poignant moment, you know, like the bury me with my ancestors, which was a reshoot by all means from what I hear. But like, still, it, it just, that, that fight is so bad that for me, I got to have it below Iron Man 1. I'm okay with that. Do we put it at the open slot of eleven? Um, or is I mean, it is it is it a worse movie than volume two? It is a worse. Okay, here's the problem. Because well, that volume two, that emotional, that Yondu death scene, just I'm gonna oh. to- I'm gonna torment you because and they, and they play the chain by Fleetwood Mac. Yes, like oh, it was shit. in the trailer, but it was in the it was in the, it was in the movie twice. The movie, movie twice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since I had a major bump, you're gonna get a major. I had a bump down. You're getting a bump up for me. I say put Black Panther at 14 and bump Guardians Volume 2, Captain America, and Doctor Strange up. The reason why is because when I really think about this, Doctor Strange didn't have an awful act. No, it, it's message. You know, it's not about you. Yeah. Or like that personal growth arc. So it carries through. I, I really like Black Panther because as a, as a person of color, culturally, I, it, it, I could see how the character, the actors embraced this you know the african-american community in this country embraced black panther right wakanda forever the gesture like kids like like you know young young african-american kids in this country had a a a hero a superhero to look up to now like so many like so many spins that people were putting at i i like that phenomenal cast now the 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 script for the first two acts was really good acting was great cinematography was great like you said third act was just we it, both said this. It just felt like they ran out of time and money. And we both, I, I felt the bad. cool. Yeah, and the I rematch, felt bad. You know, the, yep. the quasi civil war in Wakanda. Yep, that's cool. Yep. But why is it only like fifty people? And the and the rhinos, the CGI was bad there. The fight scene in the in the in the train tunnel was awful. Like the CGI for that, it just yeah. They they really like. I think I think volume the third act was supposed probably supposed to be bigger, grander, and longer. And they were Marvel and Disney were like, no, we got to get started on the big one. Yeah. And so it, it hurt. So, but the good thing is, unfortunately, with Chadwick Boseman's, you know, passing a couple of years ago, we're not going to get what he wanted to do in the sequel with T'Challa. But I have utmost confidence because he's not pushed up against any calendars. Wakanda Forever is going to be a really good film cinematically. Like the trailer, it looks like it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it know? looks fantastic. And so the story is going to be an anthology of of Wakanda leading to who's going to take the mantle of Black Panther. We're both like, we both had our ideas for that. If I had to say, I would say it would probably, it would be below those three. So I would, my feeling was you move Guardians up, you move uh, Captain America First Avenger up, you move Doctor Strange up and you put Black Panther at 14. That would be me. Works for me. Okay. Right because right. it's better than, it's better than Age of Ultron. It's a better film. I agree. Even with its faulty third act, it's a better movie overall. You know? I agree. Those okay. first two acts, they nail it. Okay. Ultron doesn't have that. No. It's got great individual performances yep. and a functional story, but it doesn't really meet that high. No, it's a lot of character fan service in Age of Ultron. Yeah, well, and it's it's setting the stage. It's yeah. the middle act of an Avengers story. Yeah, really the third act is the important part of Age of Ultron because it tells you where they're going next, you know? And it should have been Coulson showing up in the helicarrier, I swear to God. That's the biggest misstep of Phase 2 and 3 is that they, in canon, Coulson came back. He was in the show, and then they used the helicarrier and how fucking rad yeah, the, would the, that have been? The penultimate episode of season two 
is the reveal of that. The reveal. He finds the data on what's his name, not uh, the the Pat Oswald. Like no, 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 his... no. The 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 Hydra with the monocle, the Hydra agent. Oh, that... uh, not Whitehall. It's not List. It's uh. Oh fuck! Okay, the bad guy. He's the bad Hydra guy that dies in Age of Ultron. Yes, yes, not Whitehall because Whitehall was the bad in season two, but he he sh- like his characters in the back end of this of of season two of, of Agents of Shield. But then Coulson gets to where the location is, faxes over the information to Maria Hill so she can give the we're gonna get the Avengers to go get the staff, you know Loki's staff, you know. So um, it's tied in, and it's- and then they don't let it happen. Like the moment was perfect. Yeah, where. That was how you could have brought Coulson back. Because if you were, if you had been watching the show, you watched that Friday or that week before, and then that weekend you go watch Age of Ultron. And you're like, like Coulson gave them the like he's a part of this. Like, are they are this? It, they just said this is Shield. Okay, well this isn't Shield because Coulson's ahead of Shield. This isn't Shield. This is yeah, like, off the book Shield. This is how Shield supposed, supposed to be. To be. And I'm like, it, but it would have been the shield, the shield, because Coulson brought would, it yeah. back from the ashes. Yeah, that would have been so cool. Yeah, and they don't do anything with it. Way to go, Marvel. Yeah, but they were they were knee deep on the TV show. Jeff Loeb, Loeb was yeah, that was a weird in, time. Humans and all if that if it had been a now show, yeah, that's under the current structure. I guarantee you that would have happened because yeah. yeah. Clark Gregg fan favorite. They're not gonna not yeah. not give you that fan yeah. service. Okay, so I say bump bump those three up, and you put Black Panther in. Write it up. Are you up? I'm up. I'm, I, I did Ragnarok. You did Ragnarok. Okay. Unless Ragnarok is not next. Yeah, it was Ragnarok and then Black Panther that spring. And then, then it was Infinity War. You get to write a lot. Don't worry, though. I'm, my time's coming. But I'm pretty sure our next movie is going into an open slot. Because our next one is Avengers Infinity War. One of... I believe the greatest movies of all time. Culturally super impactful. You know, like it just the the snapping memes, you know, like all that, like it great villain performance, you know, it's with uh Bro James Brolin, Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin as Thanos. James Brolin is also an actor and older as his dad. Yeah. He was Castle's dad on ABC's Castle. Uh, yeah, he, he was a big soap opera. Oh yeah, big career that guy. 70s and 80s. Josh, uh, James Berlin. Okay, so there we go. So we're, we're at Infinity War. Yep. My first glance at this list, as I look at it, it's got to be two. In terms of how what it was for the universe, Thor's entrance to Wakanda. I'm gonna switch him back. Oh yeah. There we go. You know, like it's hard to say it's not number two. <laughs> Greatest cinematic uh, cinematic introduction scene ever. I will say this. If it hadn't been spoiled in the trailer, Hulk showing up in Ragnarok would have been that good. Yeah. It just was spoiled in the trailer because it was the great it was a great line. Don't get me wrong. The I know him, he's a friend from work. But like, come on. That should have been kept for the movie. And I want to bet what Taika didn't want that in the trailer. No director wants that spoiled. Yeah. But it happened. But man, Thor dropping on Wakanda after we just basically saw him die because he took a star to the face. Yep. And with the Avengers theme kicking up as the hammer swings around and just decimates the army and it saves everyone's lives and he catches it and the, the theme swells. Holy yeah. shit, what a moment. That was probably the most... And then the 180, they still lose. Yeah. Oh, what a gut punch. It still hits so hard. It's incredible. Like that final stand, you know, like Thanos just beats them all. Yep. You know, only only Steve holds him off for like a second, and then Wanda for a little bit, and he still wins because he's got the time stone. So, Ugh. my like I said before, my wife's not a big fan, but she's watched. She went to go watch Infinity War with me at the movie theater. At the end, when the credits hit, she's like, "The fuck just happened here?" And I, she wasn't the only one. That was a big response from casual moviegoers. Yeah, they didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. Comics because, are a niche thing. Yeah, the comics. But we knew that it would. That we had knew because. Previously, Feige shows at, at I don't know. Well, we at, knew Endgame in, was coming. Well, Infinity we War 1 and Part 1 and Part 2. Like, that's what it was labeled originally. Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2. So we knew Part 1 was going to end on probably a bad note, you know? And if you read the comic, the Infinity Saga, or the Gauntlet, you knew what was going to happen, right? And it happened. But it happened in such a fucked up way for people because they were like, 
because so much energy is, you know, just pushed like, out of people. Everything in that moment, yeah. everything's going like, hard. And then it's just the music. It's just heavy. Yep. It is just imposing as Thanos just keeps pushing. And then, you know, you see Thor throw the hammer right into think, his chest. Oh, this is it. And he goes, you should have went for the head. Boom. People were like, what the fuck? And just people were dying. Oh, what the fuck? Oh my God. And then, and then Thor for Hemsworth, like, what did you do? Yeah. Like that delivery was incredible. I could have done without, I could have done without Thanos on the planet that, that, that exile. But planet. it was a great button it's because true. he said he, what he would do. He yeah. And he did what he like, did. Like for us. Yes. But for like the casual fans are like, <laughs> and, but then we hit credits. Like, oh fuck. Infinity war is number two. I agree. Number two. And that's tough for me because I was watch. I said after no way home came out, it was number two, but I watched infinity war a few weeks ago. And after watching No Way Home today, I have to say Infinity War is number two. Because it's an ensemble film, but they stick the landing with so many characters. They do it so well. Okay. Okay. So, I believe this means that the phase... I want to say phase... Yeah, there were, there's still more movies to come here. Yeah. Two, I believe. No, three. One. Why does this one not have a link on the Wikipedia page? That's why I couldn't see it. Uh, the next up on the list is another Ant-Man movie. Ant-Man and the Wasp. So for me, it's not as fun as the first one. No. The first one was half the fun was how good it was. Like, yep. it was a surprise. Yep. So we knew it'd be fun, and it still was. Uh, Walton Goggins as a villain. You know, you had Ghost. She was an emotion. Like, it, still a, you know, a tragic character. And Lawrence Fishburne. Fishburne or Fishburne? Fishburne. Say, Fishburne. Yeah, he says the U. Yeah. Heavy, more so than the O. He hinted at playing a, a, ch- a, change, a size changing character as well. Yeah, because he was the original mm-hmm. Giant Man. Giant Man, yeah. Yeah. Like in the, in the lore, he's the original Giant Man. So, yeah. like, it's got a lot going for it. Uh, Agent Wu. Yep. Uh, he, he is so fun. Yep. And he shows up Randall again. Park is yeah. a he needs to be in more MCU Disney Plus shows. Like if they ever do, if, if they do an alias show, he needs to pop in for an episode. Yeah, you know, like a liaison with the FBI. Like he's the one that works with super powered people every once in a while because yeah. he's worked with. And Ant-Man. he's so excited to be at New Asgard working with. Dude, with how amazing would that be? He's just like so he'd, geeked. He'd be a kid in a candy yeah. store. Yeah, like he'd be like, ooh. I, he, he's like learned magic and he's like well now I get to learn real magic yep. you know like and but then he turns out to be this awesome fucking sorcerer yeah. how, how crazy would that be <laughs> that would be so cool so uh, so Ant-Man and Wasp unfortunately for me yeah, are you gonna go above or below Iron Man 2 uh, below Iron Man 2 ooh yes I'm gonna say okay. I was disappointed with this film okay only because I thought the, the villainous side of this movie had a lot to be desired yeah. I, I much thought, like the first one. No. And again, that's not the though these movies are not, you know, hero versus villain movies. No, no. They're almost slice of life movies. Yeah. You know, in terms of like it's just one guy's story about yeah. how he's dealing with the world. Well, he's still recovering from his time in Civil War. Like he's yeah. still under house arrest and all that stuff. And you it's know him, it's him like re engaging with, you know, his kind of you know I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna take that back because Iron Man two well I'm going to say this. Iron Man 2. It's very close. I would, I would say it's either 21 or 22. I would say Ant-Man 2. Ant-Man and Wasp is 21, and Iron Man 2 gets bumped to 22. All right. That's how I feel. Another bump? Yeah, another bump. Just because it's close. There's a little, there's a there's a gap, but it's pretty close to And it Ant-Man. may pop up as we keep going. It's possible. It's possible. Because there's some, there some movies that aren't, like, we have to, like, they're going to take the back half. They're going to, yeah, they're going to start filling up the back half. Have you half. noticed something, though? Both you and I are... All, you know the first the first couple phases everything's still front end it's and it's recent so stuff good. is the recent stuff is getting mapped out to being back in so that's well, some of it as oh, of now as of now know, just based off what's left uh, a bunch of this stuff's got a, something uh, moving down a shitload okay. okay which is why i might go get a paper towel because this might it would go faster go faster this. okay but um i would say ant-man and wasp 21 iron man 2 at 22 all right if you want to write that up i'll go get that paper towel okay do this. Plus, I gotta hit the restroom. Am I vamping, or can you just cut, or do you want to? Okay, cool. I was vamping for a bit. Let me get some water. All right. So we're back at it. As Fusion gets his water, we just left off with Ant Man and the Wasp. So we are now up to 
Uh, Captain Marvel as we barrel along through phase three. Boop. So, this is, for me, below Iron Man 2. But it's above Incredible Hulk just because I think... Actually, I don't know, man. Now I think about it. We have talked about Captain Marvel a few times over the last two it's years. It's a tough one. And I think the biggest thing I'm frustrated about, I don't know how you feel, is that I think the direction of Brie Larson's frustrating because is she going to be funny? They also didn't know. This was filmed before, before Infinity, Infinity War. War. And then also before Endgame. So they didn't know what she was going to be. She's way more fun in Endgame. Okay. Even the little we get with her. They didn't know where to take her, so they, they kind of had to leave her as a blank slate because they knew this was origin, and then this, the where she was going to go next would be somebody else's prop like thing. So they left her kind of intentionally blank because Brie Larson is a fantastic actress. No, she's a great she's actress. Awesome. Um, so yeah. it, and she's very fun. Like go watch her in any other role. Like she's awesome. Uh, the first uh, Twenty One Jump Street, she's hilarious. Yeah, and she's like you know like uh, she shows up in Scott Pilgrim. You know, and like her her version of Metrics, uh, uh, that song by Metric, yeah, it's it's incredible, and she's, it's finally on Spotify, uh, and like she's she's fantastic. Black sheep, Black yeah, sheep. that's what it is. Black sheep. So I'm curious where I'm hoping, and honestly, given the vibe of Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel Two is going to shock people. Remember, it's not Captain Marvel Two; it's, it's the, the Marvels. The Marvels, but she, she it's going to shock people in terms of oh, she's awesome, she's fun. I like this character because Carol Danvers should be like, no, she's not like a jokey character, but she's that kind of like, if you played mass effect and you kind of play Shepard as like, even Paragon Shepard cracks a lot of just like dumb corny jokes. Like that's Captain Marvel, you know, and Jennifer Hale's voiced Captain Marvel a number of times. Like that's the kind of character she is. And I'm thinking she's going to shock people in terms of where they go with the next, well, her obviously, next iteration. Obviously, she's not going to be too serious because Miss Marvel. The, the, the tone of that. The like tone of that. can't be. No. And it's going to show, oh, she can do that. They just didn't in this movie. Maybe Monica Rambeau's character is a little, probably the dry person. She more, is going to be the drier person. The drier person. Because she's the one who's been on Earth the whole time. Yeah. You yeah. know? Well, so, while Miss Marvel's shocked to be in space, while Brie Larson's character is kind of like. Shocked to be back on Earth. Back to be back on Earth and kind of goofing it up. I really hope so because she's great at comedy. Not, I mean, just, she's a great actress. She is. She can do it all. But like, she's got a really good personality outside of film. Like, if you go watch her social media interviews, she's got a great personality. I did. I was very frustrated because they didn't know how to. And it, it could have been several things, like you said, with Infinity War and all that. They didn't really know where to put her. But the problem was is that she was shifting gears too fast in the movie. Like, she's gonna be a little hokier. Nope. Just cut her off. She's gonna be dead, dead, dry, dry, dry milk toast. It's like, uh, that um, makes you wonder how many different versions of their scenes there are. I, that know, could have been a weird one to edit. If there was ever one of these MCU movies that needs a director's cut, it's probably Captain Marvel. I could see it if the, if there if such a thing were to exist, and maybe they didn't even shoot all that much. Oh, it's also possible that the director completely just shit the bed and didn't with this. Like she, whoever you know, the director kept. Jumping back and forth with the tone. Yeah, with and it tone. could have been, again, maybe maybe yeah. they were seeing what they were doing and, like, change it up, yeah. but don't reshoot the whole yeah. movie, you know? I think, and I know people that are, like, they're so mad because it was, it was it's a 90s period piece. I was fine. I'm a kid from, you know, I grew up in the 80s, was a teen in the 90s, you know? I love the music and the decor and the dress and everything. Everything about that hit home, you know? She crash lands in the fucking blockbuster. Like, hey. You know, and Clark Gregg. And Clark Gregg. A we DH get, Clark Gregg. And come a, on. Yeah. Like, we get Coulson and Ben, ben uh, Mendelsohn. Ben as, Mendelsohn. You know, yeah. as the scrolls, but they're not the bad guys. Uh, Jude Law's kid. Uh, he, this, the Kree stuff was weird. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the Supreme, the Supreme Intelligence. Yeah, the Supreme Intelligence, yes. Interesting. Like, yeah. they built a lot of that out. Yep. It's just the actual people side of it, of the Kree, yeah. was really. Eh. But I like the fact that she gets her powers through an Infinity Stone. Yeah, like we 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 drive that. We set up how powerful she is. That's very how powerful. Well. Yeah, and she she took on the power of an Infinity Stone and lived. Okay, so there's obviously we can learn probably in the Marvels or some just whatever whatever allowed her to survive that process is allowing Kamala Khan to survive her process. Like there's something about their nature. Maybe she becomes a mutant. Maybe Carol Danvers is a mutant. You yeah, know? who knows? Because they obviously we're gonna have to explore a little bit on how Carol Danvers was able to take on the power of an infinity stone, you know? 
we, yeah. we by this point we know that um that um that star lord is half celestial yeah or is ego a celestial now we have that question is he really a celestial yeah or is he just a elevated he, consciousness a, a elevated, like an elevated consciousness but like you know with eternals that whole they idea, really they really dove hard into the celestials yeah and so it's like is he really a celestial or does he think he is, you know, like, okay. Cause he's existed as long as the celestial. He's, uh, he's definitely on their level. Yep. Yeah. But is he an actual one? Is he an actual celestial? So is he born of a planet? Was he a conscious born of a planet through a, through a celestial, like a life seed or no, you know? So there's so many things to ask about what's coming up with the Marvels with, with this one though. So then, yeah. Do, do you put it above or below incredible Hulk? I'm going to say it's above. Okay. okay. As much shit as I've given it here tonight, it's not an awful movie, but it's not a real. It's not a good film. There's just so many elements that are in it that make it fun from time to time. Like yeah, like you said, it's got also, good moments. You know the you know de aging of of Samuel Jackson. You know yeah, with the and then the cat thing scratching the cat his thing eye. scratching his eye. Like you said, the Kree stuff. I didn't like the way they. Like, I liked the scroll turn though. Yeah, when he shows up at the house drinking a, this is, drinking this is, a coke. This is, uh, yeah, you know, like that was pretty good actually. Yeah. I quite liked it. Yep. I'm curious what they're going to do with the scrolls now. Well, they're going to they've something established them that they're like a decimated race. Well, like it's going to be a big deal because of secret invasion. Yeah, and like they're doing that, but I'm like, but you guys set up the scrolls as good guys, yeah. like nice people. Yeah, people that got fucked yeah. by the Kree. In, in the comics, the, the scrolls are not good people. They're and the Kree race. are established as like good, but like egotistically like, like good, yeah, harsh good. So like, the good supreme well, order, harsh. Yeah. So like. Kind of how they were spun in Agents of Shield before it got really weird with Agents of Shield in space. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm gonna probably say 24, maybe 24. 24. Okay. I have no problem I'll with that being 24. One, no problem with that one being 24. I will tell you, I've probably only watched this movie a handful of times. I do watch them all, but I may have watched this one maybe three or four times total. So there we go. Captain Marvel twenty four. We spent a lot of time talking about it though. Yeah, I, it's got I, it's got interesting points. Like, well, I think it's got I think some stuff to going for it. I think the Miss Marvel element's gonna make this character, Carol Danvers' character, different. You know. Yeah, and I think they're gonna let Brie Larson shine. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, so speaking of watching stuff though, I'm thinking next vacation that I come down to Austin. I might talk to Chris about this. So Chris, if I clip this out and send it to you, what would you think about we come to Austin? Do some a place like this, which is a good space, and somebody brings. I might bring my soundbar if I drive because the aud- the audio system's not very good. And we do a MCU watch along, and we watch literally all of it, beyond maybe the shows. And we can barbecue. We can order pizza. Place has a grill. You got great pizza. I mean, come on, that sounds like a hell of a vacation food. to me. Yeah. yeah, have people over, watch different movies as we go. It'd be a great time. And we split the cost. There you go. All right, so we're moving on. Okay. I believe we're on the last of phase three. Yes. Spider-Man Far From Home. No, we nope. missed one. Avengers Endgame. Yep. That to me, because of the emotional resonance, it tied off so much. It stuck the landing with so many different character arcs. It's got to go three or four. I'm going to say four. I you, don't know how you, you feel. You're going to put the next Spider-Man at three? No. Not Far From Home. You're going to put No Way Home No there. Home three. So, so we're going to have to bump a shitload down at some point. At some point, we're going to have to do a massive bump. Okay, so why do you want to... Why, uh, since we spent so much time on Marvel, why do you want to put Endgame at four instead of three? It's a good movie. Actually, a very, very good movie. Biggest problem I have, and you've heard me rant about this, is the five-year jump creates so many... It created a big chasm of storytelling for the rest of the MCU. But at the same time, they're exploring it now. No, they're, no, they're getting I, into it. I'm saying I, I knew they're exploring it. I just, for me, it's just when I really think about. And look, guys, I'm not one. If you ever follow me on social media or you follow us chatting about this stuff, I don't hate any of these productions because they really put an effort into making sure it's a good ex- movie experience. That's what Disney and Marvel do. But I think for me, like, and I, you have to leave your leave logic at the door. For, for fantasy, right? You just have to, right? Um, but I still can't avoid the little bit of logic that five years is just a huge gap for so many things going forward, right? That kind of bothered me. Um, I really felt like 
the first couple of acts were a little slow, act one and two. And the third act, we just like, let's go balls to the wall. Let's get it done fast. But it still takes an hour. It still takes an hour. But it's like when you're like, okay, we're we're back. What's next? And it's just like as soon as as we, as soon as Hulk puts on that glove, from there to the end of the film, it's just like 150 miles an hour. Where the first two acts didn't feel like that. Obviously, Act Two was a little more actiony because they're all jumping around. But that first act was very slow. It was very very slow. I would say narratively though, it kind of has to be though. Because, because you have you got the fallout mood. of yeah. Infinity War. Yeah, that's true. Like you gotta have the character sit with that failure. But was that do you really think that that pace of that first act was intentional by the Russo brothers? I think so. Oh. They're they're good in a filmmaker. No, no, no. I'm not dis- I'm just not I'm not you know discounting the, the Russo brothers at all. But what I'm just thinking is like, was it more of just like Because that's when you gotta check in with the originals. Yeah. You gotta talk, you gotta see Cap, you gotta see Widow, you gotta see Iron Man and Hulk and Thor. You know, and like each one gets their own moment of like what are they up to and how, where are they here mentally? Well, it, I think the only thing was coming off of Infinity War, which is a great film. There was a few things frustrated about Infinity War, and when that was, we got no Scott Lang, we got no Hawkeye, right? Of course, they're a much bigger role in, in, in Endgame, but like, I didn't really, like, I had nothing on either one. And maybe we learned down the road that they actually shot some scenes and it just, the pacing of their scenes had no effect on it. Like it just, it was no relevance to them, you know? I could have done with a scene of them being visited by yeah. someone. Yeah. Like someone in, or, the, in the universe. Or like, or, maybe or, or Tasha's making them. a call to Barton, like, hey, well, this is what's going on, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. That way he, that way it's like, he's like, look, I'm retired. I'm staying retired. I got my deal. I have no need to get back involved in any of this anymore, you know? Or he's watching TV, like they are outside and they come inside and he's, his, she's watching on the channel, like the, the battle of New like the invasion of New York, right? You know, this new invasion. Yeah. And he's just like thinking about going and it's like, it's too late. It's too late. You should have gone or I should go or, you know, something like it, just a little bit. And it didn't have to be so much Scott Lang, just more so for Hawkeye, because he obviously was one of the pivotal characters through all the other Avengers films. You know, we set up in Age of Ultron how important he is. He's the backbone of the Avengers. Yeah. And we didn't get him at all in Infinity War. So I think coming in in Endgame, he's going to be Ronin. And I, I think for me, it's a great film, but I think No Way Home is better. Okay. Just because No Way Home encompasses so much like. It takes the multiverse and like, it takes the Sony Spider Verses together yes. and wraps things up really, really it well. It wraps up a lot of stories on like when those. Otto gets his mind back. It's like, fuck, dude. You know when when they're when the villains talk to their Spider Man. Yeah. And I don't want to talk too much about No Way Home yet because I want to get to that point. But it's a great movie. So you so you say Endgame is three. Oh no, I was just asking okay. for talking okay. sake. Okay, so I would say Endgame is four. Okay. I would say Endgame is four. Great film, man. Write it up. Great film. Yeah. Okay. So in game four. All right. We so we're up to the last of phase three. The ending of the Infinity Saga, the coda, if you will. That is Spider-Man Far From Home. Okay. Which means we got to bump some stuff. So for argument's sake, is it below or above the first Spider-Man movie? It's below. For me, it's below Homecoming. Okay. And I actually don't disagree because the first Spider-Man is a tremendous Spider-Man yeah, origin story yeah. without getting without getting the great power, great responsibility line. It's got the great villain, which no far from home's got a great villain. Yes. Jake Gyllenhaal brought it. The yeah. whole cast of bad guys yeah. for being like bit players, they brought it. Yeah. Like they were all it was a great villain story. Like because sure. they had an they had an arc. They had a growth of like this is why we're doing what we're doing. Well, hell, one of the one of the if you notice one of the employees who plays Ra- of course he was Ralph in Iron Man. Well, he was Ralphie in the Christmas story. Yeah. Um, he's in the first Iron Man. Yeah, he's the one getting yelled at by by Obadiah Stane. Stane. Yep, and it's like they have they're taking a lot of those bit things and going Creating, on, bringing it full circle and telling yeah, a good yeah, story. Yeah. You know, you've got Nick Fury being around, but he's not really Nick Fury, which you find out at the end, of course. You know, it's got a great you know mastering of his abilities kind of arc for spider-man sure you know he's you know with the with the spider sense and all that which yeah. is the first time we really get that the peter tingle yeah, yeah. but it's also a little played a little too loose yes and, Almo- and homecoming's a tighter movie oh it is almost to the point where it's ho- hokey a little bit in spots yeah um I happy think- plays a little too big of a role for yes my case. yes wait i think he was i bad. like favreau yeah. i like the character I like him as a bit player. Like I would love to see 
him show up uh, in Spider-Man 4 as the, you know, Peter testing the waters of, like, becoming, getting back into the world a little bit. Sure. You know, the wider world of being a superhero. Sure. You know, and, like, him being the, the how how are we going to figure out what the fuck's going on with, Peter, like, Peter's existence? Yep. You know, like, that's going to be an interesting one. So, uh, we're, if you're going to go after Seven, what's bumping? Where's the bump line? Is it a below Avengers, above Avengers? For me, it's below Avengers. Okay, so eight, it's, o- it's obviously eight, good. It's obviously below Guardians for me because, well, that's me. Guardians is a really good film. Okay. Iron Man, it's still a quintessential top 10 for me. Uh, you're going to say it's top 10. Really? I want to. Really? For, you, you, so you give, or you have a much oh, no, don't get higher me perspective it's, of Marvel. None of these movies are bad. No, though. no, no. I would say that for me, the quality cut line for me is probably first avenger i'm gonna say there you are there you go so like it's above first avenger i think yep i say i would probably put uh, far from home at 12 yeah you put that at 12 bump everything else down <laughs> that's, that's a lot that's a big bump of, that's that's a big one, stack of movies moving. seven mo- seven movies we gotta move but i i I, I really I will say, yeah the finale of Guardi- Va- Guardians Volume Two is what holds it there. Yeah, that is so powerful. Yep, that that that. I mean, funeral, hell, just the funeral scene. Yeah, I was gonna say Yondu's funeral is beautiful. Like the way they did it is beautiful. It's just one of those one of the best MCU moments. Period. Because they tell you in the beginning of the film, Yondu, because of what you did, you'll never see the colors. And it's like, what does that mean? And then they see it. You, you see know? it at the end. You're like. Oh, that's what they mean. That's fucking awesome. You know, like that, the music, like everything yeah. about it. And I think at the very, that last shot is you see that they are a family now. You know, like the, the, yeah, the Guardians are a it. family. And like home, far from home, the finale doesn't hit as hard except the cliffhanger. Yeah. The cliffhanger is perfect. Yep. But it's not quite as impactful in its ending. And it's quick too. Yeah pretty quick ending so yeah i think and for, I, I will say i did have a problem with kind of the middle so gonna, you said you're gonna bump first avenger i would bump i would bump first avenger down okay are you is it your turn did i put no, I'll just wipe it. okay far from home at number yep a new number 12 how do you feel about this with that i'm good with it so far a few quibbles on my list but nothing major I think more or less we're kind of in agreement on some things beyond a few, okay. a few that might move up or down. Well, I know one, our two and two. threes, our two and threes are a little. We could, you and I could debate. We could that. debate them, but like at the end of the day, they're phenomenal movies. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we are on to phase four, the last of the phases. Okay. We're over two hours on the recording, by the Ooh, way. Oh boy! I, I, fit- I figured it'd be a long. It's the fiftieth episode. I mean, it was. Gotta get crazy. You're getting good content here. Gotta get nuts. And I'll probably clip out some of the stuff where we're just like writing and talking. Um, So it'll probably be trimmed down to be a little shorter. So phase four kicked off with Black Widow, which is a movie for me that was four or five years too late. Yes. Should have been greenlit immediately after Winter Soldier Mm -hmm. because it is such an in that vein kind of movie. Then again, if they'd have done it that fast, we wouldn't have got Florence Pugh or David Harbour. No. Like... So at the same time, I mean, yeah. Florence Pugh's awesome. Yeah, but she was too young, and Harbor hadn't had Stranger Things come yeah, out yet. Yeah, he hadn't had that bump, so yeah. we wouldn't have got that. Yeah. So I'm curious where we're going to rank this, because for me, it's below Ant-Man 1. Okay. I think it's even below Iron Man 2. It's, it's more fun because of Florence Pugh and David Harbor than Captain Marvel. So my first blush says 23. First, first glance is 23. Where are you at? I liked it better than I did Black, uh, than Captain Marvel. I will yeah. say that. So that's definitely above 24. It's above 24. I think it's... I would say Iron. it's better than Iron Man 2. Okay. So I would pro- if it were me, I would say Iron Man 2 would be bumped down to 23. So what we've got left, we've got Black Widow. Shang Chi, Spider Man, No Way Home, Doctor Strange, and then Love and Thunder. Yep. Ant Man, Love. Well, you just said Ant. No, Love. not sorry. He's at Thor, Love and, and Love and Thunder. And Love and Thunder. Okay. Shang Chi is gonna create a bit of a problem for me. Yeah, I don't know where to put it. I, I really don't. Okay, 
I would say Iron Man <laughs> two moves down to twenty three, and Black Widow is twenty two. I can live with that. I'm. I, that's because it Same is time. better. It is, is better it, than is Iron Man two. What about Iron Man and the Wasp? Oh shit! You know what? No, I really. My gut is telling me it's better than Ant Man and Wasp. Put it at twenty. Yep. No, 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 no. Well, no, because I see we're gonna fight about Shang Chi. I already know we, we are. We are gonna fight about Shang Chi because I should have brought a quarter. Yeah. Um. You know what, man? Black Widow at twenty. I'm fine with that. At twenty, yep. I'll write it up. Yep. Because it is better than Iron Man two. It is better than Ant Man and Wasp. It's not better than the first Ant Man. The first Ant Man is got its funny moments. Yeah, the first Ant Man has too much going for it. Where there was a little eh with Black Widow, you know? They're like, oh, finally. Yeah. Eh, we're getting that. Okay, we're finally. And not like a finally. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, so we're moving on, yep. which means after Black Widow came Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It was last Labor Day. So. Where are you at on Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? Now, I know you like this movie more than I do, and it, not that I think it's bad. Not, and it's not even like bad finale like Black Panther for me kind of dropped. It's not that. It's just that thematically I didn't think it fit. Okay. That's true. It's not even bad shot. It's not bad shot. It looks fine. You know, it's still fun. It's still engaging. It just doesn't land as emotionally resonant as, you know, the final fight with his dad. Okay. If it had ended there, I think it would have been an even better movie. Instead, okay. of, instead of turning into Dragon Ball. I'm I'm gonna need the marker. And I know well, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm not gonna switch cameras yet. My feeling is I like Chang Chi. I do. And Simu Liu, yes, say? Simu Liu. He's he's amazing. Yep. Um I'm gonna say I'm gonna have to move down Iron Man to twenty three. Move down Ant Man and Wasp. Move down to Black Panther. I think it's j- either just tie or below Ant Man. The first Ant Man. That is way lower than I thought you were going to put this movie. Well, because I'm thinking about because well, you know, I've had a lot of time to reflect. I've had a lot of time to reflect. And it's written out because yeah, God, like my my work here looks horrible because Age of Ultron looks like ew, Black Panther. Oh wait. Oh, the eraser comes off and it's two colors. <laughs> Didn't know that. Shang-Chi. All right. Shang-Chi at 18. Okay, so last up. Well, not even last. Next after that was Eternals, which I think quite squarely goes at 29. Yes. All right, I'll take that one. <laughs> no, we're not even going to argue. Look, I've had the most shift work here today, and Warburg gets the easy one here with Eternals. This is how long we've been going. The dry erase marker is starting to dry out. It is not a good film. It is one, obviously, a movie that should have been a TV show. Yeah, it's too many characters. Everyone gets kind of a short shift, except for like one or two, even though there's some interesting characters. Characters just dis- disappear. Show up out of nowhere. We have a fucking uh, um, Celestial sitting in the middle of the ocean that... Nobody really talks about. No one's talked about since then. Um, this is a show that it should have been a TV show because of the fact that this goes over thousands yeah, upon thousands of years. It would have been incredible. Yeah. You know, like it just didn't land. No. Um, yeah. And we like the black Knight introduction. Kit Harrington is not even worth the time, honestly. So there's, and I know they're, they're working on a sequel. I'm, I'm going to be very apprehensive to go watch that movie, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, did we skip one? But no. no, there's only three left. Yes. We're on the final three. Okay. And this is where I think universally, again, well, we're just going to go right into it. Go for it. So number three is Spider-Man No Way Home. No question. That's yeah, Put top it number three. three. So you and I can talk about two and three swapping, but it it is a top three film. And having just watched it a few hours ago, I stand by it being a top three film. So there we are. This is it's getting messy here. We probably should have printed out and the, the movie logos and it would, oh, been, yeah. it would have been so much easier just to, to do that. We'll to move them around move them next around. time. Yes. Once the MCU is done and finished, we might oh, God. break out the Velcro board and oh, man. go crazy. That is like you have to take a full week of vacation to go watch that. Like you go, you know, like oh, that's what I mean. Like, like Chris, we would have to we get might have a, to do that. We would have to get a house that has like a huge reviewing room 
Yeah. And just, yeah, that's, that's the vacation is we're going to watch the MCU. Yeah. Like that's, that's going to be a thing. Yeah. You uh-huh. know, like an, just a, a movie vacation. A okay. vacation. So no way home at number three. I'm cool with that. So we're on the final two. Okay. And this is where it's going to get, what gets bumped, what gets moved, what doesn't. Next up is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I think pretty uniformly it's below the first one. Yep. Where's the cut line? Black Panther, Age of Ultron, Thor, Shang-Chi, Iron Man 3, Ant-Man, Black Widow, Ant-Man 2, Iron Man 2, Captain Marvel. Is it better than any of those movies? It is, for me, it is better for better than Black Widow. 21 is the mark for me. Okay. Now, whether you want to argue it better than Ant-Man, that's a tough one. Ant-Man I want to watch right now. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness? Nah. Probably not. I will tell you, have I watched Black Widow? I've watched it twice, right? Ant-Man and Wasp, twice. Iron Man 2, I've watched it a few, but that was the early days when we didn't have much options in the MCU, so I had to watch that one a few times. Captain Marvel, two or three times, and that's it. So I would say, for me, it would go at 21 and the others get bumped down. Okay. I can live with that. Okay. While I'm doing this, do you want to talk up your thoughts on... Oh, you got... Oh, sorry. So, Multiverse of Madness. It's got a lot going for it, though. Like, the the fight scene between the two strangers the, with the music notes. Yeah. Fuck, cool. Like, that's just visually inventive. It's got a lot of fun Sam Raimi cuts and types of horror. Uh, the Black... Uh, the Scarlet Witch Assault on Comertage. Incredible. Very, very well done. The horror sequence where she's, like, coming out of the water and, like, dragging, you know, the Comertage, like, citizens down into the depths, you know? Like... That's visually just like frightening. A lot of like imagery that's like unsettling. You know, like the zombie strange stuff. Like there's a lot of that's like, ooh, this is cool. But it doesn't really land as well for me. And that's partly because it's heavily relied so much on something that's not on our board, and that's WandaVision. And, you know, like it's just it feels like a movie that I don't know. I don't I want to say like it should have been a series, but more like it's a movie that needed either a flashback or something to the, that sequence with WandaVision, something to allude to it for the greater audience because it didn't seem like most of the, the casual audience didn't watch WandaVision. Yeah. No, 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 no. And like, it's not that her story is meaningless or anything like that. You know, it's just that they don't tie up a lot of those arcs. Like they take the main thing with the kids, but like Vision's an actual real being. That's nowhere. Yeah. Where was Vision? The love of her life that spurned her to go crazy is nowhere to be found in this film. Not even mentioned, right? Yeah. I think, like, his death at the hands of Thanos is mentioned briefly at the beginning, but that's it. There's a... Yeah. I did have a problem with the fact that if you didn't watch WandaVision, you weren't going to know what was going on with Wanda. Yeah. Other than, oh, she's crazy now. Yeah. Now, again, some cool scenes. Her wiping the shit, wiping the floor with the Illuminati. <laughs> Fucking cool. Yeah. We got it. We got, we finally got our Reed John Richards. We've got, we got our John Krasinski as we Reed got Richards. Charles Xavier. Yep. You got the yellow real chair, Charles Xavier, yep. with the X Men theme. Which, by the way, when the X Men show up, do you want the 90s theme or do you want Ottman's X Men theme? I think Ottman's X Men theme. I think it fits more. Yeah. I want when Secret War happens and they're on, you know, whatever happens and the, and the Fox X Men show up in the jet. I want that Ottman theme fucking yeah. hammered. Balls to the wall. Start. Don't give it the buildup. It's just bam. But you Go also right remember we may all even get 90s X-Men in that way because it's going to potentially involve multiverse characters, right? Yeah, I think you could, you could do both. But I, I think at this point, the 90s X-Men theme, the audience has heard it a few times. It's been a bit since the mainstream audience has heard that theme. Yeah. And it's been a bit since we've seen those characters. True. Beyond, but Xavier. we are getting X Men ninety seven though. We are getting that, but at the same time, come on, John John Ottman's X Men theme is one of the all time fucking bangers. No, man. no, it is. A I have great three story. versions of it in my soundtrack playlist. You got the X two. Yep. Right. You got uh, the one with Apocalypse. Um, um, um not the Dave. year X Men, the thing at the end. Yep. It's really good, right? Uh, and Days of Future Past has the intro. Yep. It, it's fucking awesome. Like after the, you know, there was the X-Men origins, things were weird. And then days of future past comes out 
and right from the jump, John Ottman's X Men theme, and you're like, they're back. Yep. The X Men are here. Yep. You know, it's like that theme is perfect. We need more of it. So I hope I hope it's that theme. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited of what they're gonna do, but we got there's there was just so much to be desired about the multiverse of madness because look, America Chavez was introduced. I thought that was a great job. The, I forget her name that they cast as as America Chavez. I thought she had the look and she fit the character perfectly. Biggest problem I have is it's a movie about the multiverse and it doesn't have much multiverse. Yeah, they in left it. too much on the table. Like and, we, and this is coming off the like less than six months later, everything everywhere all at once comes out and you yeah. know it's like it says hold my beer. Yep. On in terms of the multiverse. that's why when I say that that's probably the best multiverse movie you've ever watched, it's because they do it right. They show you what the multiverse is about. Whereas this one, this strange character is a bit lost in the multiverse. And it's like, uh, uh, w- what's going on. And it's, but you know what it is, you know, like you tell Spider-Man and no way home, you have an idea of how the multiverse operates to a degree, but there's a lot you don't understand. That's fair. But yeah, I, I have a lot of, I had a lot of problems with this movie. I did. I did. Now I'm not saying it's a horrible movie because the Eternals was bad compared to it. Dark World. We both rate Incredible Hulk a lot lower than some of our friends rated a lot higher than us. But I will say, Eternals is by far the worst. Okay. Even twenty eight and up. There's a big gap between twenty eight and twenty nine. Big gap. Yeah. Yes. Big, that's big that's gap. fair. That's fair. And there is there's a big a huge gap between twenty nine and twenty eight. But I'm sure, I'm gonna have a feeling that with our last last one here that there's a gap between Dark World and twenty seven. So yeah. Yeah. Let's wrap this up. So we're on the last one, and that is Thor, Love and Thunder. So where do we put this one? This one, this one's going to be tough. Yeah. Um, so is it is above Dark World? Obviously it's above, above Captain Marvel. Yep. Is it above Ant-Man and the Wasp? Because for me, a lot of those jokes did not land as much as I wanted them to. It feels like two movies that didn't, like we were bringing up Winter Soldier as a, it made two stories work. Yeah. Love and Thunder for me did not. It's got the Thor Jane Foster story and Jane Foster's, you know, big arc, right? That's one movie. Yeah. It's got Gore the God Butcher. That's one movie. Didn't marry them at all. And it's and Sif was pretty much a throwaway. Yeah. You know, like the beginning and the end of the film. You know, even Valkyrie doesn't have much to do. No. And she gets she gets sidelined right in the big first big fight. So it's like, you know. Now the the this the the part where they're they're hanging out with the gods, you know, to get the bolt from Zeus. Yeah, like there's potential and, there. They just don't they don't flesh well, it out. Here's, much like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, so much is left on the okay. table in this movie. You're gonna hear this from me. This is Taika's Iron Man two. He, I think he went way too. He thought way too hard into this, just like Favreau did with Iron Man two. Like Iron Man two was a bit different in that. We were going to establish S.H.I.E.L.D. We were going to establish Nick Fury, the Avengers Initiative, even further outside of that Easter egg, the yeah. end credit scene of the first Iron really Man really world building. So I think, I think Favreau cracked under that pressure of the world building that was going on his shoulders with Iron Man 2. Because by the time Iron Man 2 was in production, Captain America and Thor were in production, or in pre-production. So like we knew we were on our way to an Avengers movie. The Avengers film had not been announced, but we were on our way to... The, the the big collective movie, but I think Favreau cracked into that pressure. That said, I think Taika Waititi shit the bed here. I think he just took the took out the cool visuals of Jer- uh... Jane. No, the, the 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 writer of the of the Mighty Thor. Oh, John. Uh... Jason is it Jason Alexander. No, it's not. No, Jason. that's the Seinfeld guy. Um, kind of, what is his name? It was on my. I, I had talked about it. J- anyway, okay. took the guts of that run. The mighty, the mighty Thor run. Yes, took the cool visuals of it without yeah. the heart. There was very little heart in here it until the very the, end. The emotional beats didn't really land until her sacrifice, which hits. Yep. But man, if if it, she'd had more runtime, yeah, to it, come to terms with, it, I think it would have hit harder. It if was. It, if it was a two parter, this movie would be great. It was so damn hokey. The story's there. It's just, it's too condensed. It's too much going on in yeah. one movie. Too damn hokey until she's in the hospital at the very end. Yeah, then when it clicks, but like that should have been that should have been where the first one ends and then part two is coming to terms with, well, I guess I am gonna die. So I think I think Taika was 
way too focused on the comedy. Way yeah. too focused on it. And him. I think part of that maybe it is maybe and part of that's Marvel saying we don't want to do two. Yeah. Maybe we maybe it's you have to do it in two hours. And it was a very short two hours, yeah. It flew it was too fast. Yeah. Pacing was just I think if it had been a close to three hour film, you could have probably corrected a lot of that pacing issue with the comedy. Even still though, like you said, there's just too many Because Ragnarok's directions. got the heart. Yes, it does. It's got the heavy moments where yeah. he's like sitting in the jail, you know, like realizing, man, my my dad's dead. You know, like my world's gone. Yeah. You know, like my people are gone. You know, and, it, like, and it's immediately balanced out with the Hulk introduction. Yeah, like, and it it goes yeah. back, it goes back and forth. Yeah. Whereas, Love and Thunder does not. It's all one way. It's all comedy all the time. Which that's Chris's problem with Ragnarok, and I'm like, dude, you're missing the drama. But that's a Chris problem. This I totally understand with him. So I'm with him here. Just Christmas loathe this movie. I'm sure he hates it. I haven't asked him. <laughs> Because this movie is just, it it doesn't stick the landing with the comedy. The drama is like, oh, now we're getting drama, you know? Like, now? Oh, yeah, so, right at the end? Yeah. So, so okay. where do you put it? Quite honestly, if I had to ca- I, if I had to say where would it go, for me, it is better than Captain Marvel. Okay. Okay? I would probably say it's at 25, Marvel goes to 26, and Hulk moves down to 27. I can live with that, because Iron Man 2 has got the scene on the, the race scene. Yes. Just, oh, yo, yeah, yeah. He, the suitcase armor, suitcase yeah. Just pulls it open. Suitcase armor was fun. Holy shit. Yep. Uh, Rody. The, it's the, got Ro- the <clears throat> introduction of Rody. So well, good. not even that, but the, the drunken birthday party fight scene between Rhodey and Iron Man was, it wasn't horrible, but it was kind of fun. It had, and it, then had, he, it had emotional stakes yep. without being world ending. And then it's hung over, he's hung over at the donut shop in LA, and you get introduced to the fact that yeah, Black Widow's. She's, she's Black she's, Widow. She's Black Widow yeah. yeah. And so that's, the, I mean, there were parts there. I, I think the biggest problem was, and it, it's nothing against, oh God, I forget his name now. Justin Hammer's uh, the actor that played Justin Hammer. Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. He is a great fucking actor. They could have, I think it was, he was too slapsticky to me. Yeah. Like, I, I, he's the character I, I get. He's coming back sometime. Yeah. But imagine he's the guy outfitting the Thunderbolts. He's the guy. He's their tech guy. Well, he did out. Well, he is out there. Be, Hammer Tech is still out there because of Luke Cage. We know that. Mm-hmm. And I think there's another. Wasn't he mentioned in a like in a film like in the last couple years? I wouldn't mind seeing. I could bet him seeing it. See him show up on She-Hulk in some way. Yeah, but like, is he the person behind the blood? Uh, I didn't even think about. Him. I was thinking yeah, the leader. You're and thinking I'm like, the leader. Or, but if they're really trying to lean into Thunderbolts. Yep. And and Ross is off the table because of William Hurt. Yes. So you got to introduce somebody. Yep. And so, get Sam Rockwell's character because so, so he's he's a fan favorite. So what if Justin Hammer becomes the Red Hulk? That would that could work. Yeah, like an angry but goofy kind of character, you know, that fits She Hulk. Yeah, you know, and have him be that like he because his character is kind of a misogynist. He'd be a good foil for her. Yep. Like. Oh, I'm talking myself into this. There you go. See, my my point with 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 uh, Rockwell was he was underutilized in Iron Man Two. They were so focused on Mickey Rourke in mm-hmm. that movie. Yeah, way too focused on him. Where we needed more Rockwell, you know. Uh, and I get it. He was the muscle. R- Rourke's character was the muscle. I get that, but no, you need a strategist to ca- like the only, the best way to beat Tony Stark is brain versus brain and. I, I know Rockwell's character, uh, Hammer, wasn't as smart, but he can outsmart him from time to time, you know? Yeah. And so I'll maneuver him, yeah. Yeah, I'll maneuver him. So I, I think I think I think it's better than Captain Marvel, but not better than Iron Man 2. Yeah. Okay, well, this is the last one. I think you have the last one. I'll take it. Because I did the uh the the Doctor Strange, so I'm gonna, gonna move so we're moving these two. Yep. We're moving those two down. Yeah, I'm I'm cool, I'm cool with it being 25. Yeah. Okay. Hey, it's a top 25 Marvel film. So we have <laughs> our list. Time to time to take the rundown. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll do. I'll do first 10. You do next 10, and then we'll okay. and then I'll wrap it up. Okay. Okay. So you want to go bottom up or top down? Let's go bottom to top. Okay. So starting off, we're gonna go ascending order, 29 through number one. First up. At number 29, we have The Eternals. Marvel's The Eternals. Number 28, Thor, The Dark World, the second Thor movie. Number 27, we have The Incredible Hulk, the Edward Norton movie. At 26, we have Captain Marvel. 
At 25, we have another Thor movie, Thor Love and Thunder. 24, we have Iron Man 2, the first sequel in the MCU. Yep. Another sequel at 23, Ant-Man and the Wasp. At 22, we have Black Widow, which again, as we said, is a movie way too late. Number 21 is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And number 20 is the first Ant-Man. Fusion. What do we got next? Number 19, Shane Black's Iron Man 3. It gets slapped around a lot on where it should be ranked. I think it's a fairly decent film. 18 is probably an underrated film for me, even though you hate the third act very much. Well, not even the third act, the final fight. Uh, Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, I really enjoy the film, but I understand like there's a lot that was left on the table. First act, the fight scenes were incredible. Oh, the choreography is incredible. The fight choreography incredible. Number 17, uh, the first Thor, Bleached Eyebrows. Uh, not a bad film. But... I could see those two being flipped, if yeah. I'm being honest. Okay. Um, the one that we both actually, surprisingly, from now that I see this, we both rated higher than I thought we were was Age of Ultron. I, I agree. At 16, I, Age of Ultron. I, you know, we know we, you and I really don't talk about Age of Ultron much. Maybe we need to do an episode where we just, like, watch it and then sit down and go over it because – Obviously, I was thinking this was going to be in the 20s and it landed at 16. It's the cut line, basically. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, number 15, Black Panther. Credible first, second act. That third act was really, really bad. And we both don't give Ryan Coogler, you know, we're not blaming Ryan Coogler because we know Marvel behind the and, scenes, it was a, very, a lot of crunch yeah, running well, up against Infinity yep. War. And we're finding out how bad it is to work with Marvel and Disney now with when it comes to crunch and on the, on the production side of films now. Um, and that's unfortunate, but yes, Black Panther, uh, it had a lot to be desired, but it wasn't a horrible film. Um, number 14, Doctor Strange. I think we both feel it's a, it's a kind of a underrated film. I agree. It's a perfectly perfunctory origin story yes, yes. with some very cool visuals. It's the Force Awakens, but with a but with a tighter story. A tighter story, yeah. And the, and legit the strings, like the court, like the the different kind of music. It's very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, number thirteen, Captain America: The First Avenger. Um, you know, I think when you and I and Chris years back did our top, we did a Marvel countdown. The First Avenger was a lot higher, but. A lot of movies hadn't come out at that point. A lot of movies have come out. Infinity War and Endgame and No Way Home and Ragnarok because all of that because we did a we did a countdown before Ragnarok came out. Yep. And then Ragnarok came out and we had to we had to have Chris back on to hear him complain about that. But yeah, uh, I liked First Avenger. It's a good period piece. Good period piece. Um, uh, Number twelve, Spider Man: Far From Home. This was a good one. This was interesting. Another interesting one for me because I thought you and I were going to fight over this because I thought you might have it higher than I do. I'm not disrespecting Far From Home, but I just think that at this point we're getting to an area where we have some really tough movies that it has to be. And like right, like much like Shang Chi and Thor, you could tell me Volume Two Guardians and Far From Home are going to swap, and I'd be totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, number eleven, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I think that we both agreed that the middle of this movie got a little. Eh. Uh, the soundtrack was once again great, um, but the good thing is. James Gunn didn't have a, a horrible sophomore experience. No. Like Favreau did with Iron Man 2, uh, with Waikiti did with Love and Thunder. We both felt like, hey, this was a good film. It's just you're what the next well, we're about to hit a top ten that's just like, oh my God. Like, like some and, of these top tens are some of the best movies of all time. And I'm gonna hand it off to you to finish off the top ten here, man. So we've got the very first one, the one that kicked it all off, Iron Man. Yep. Robert Downey Jr.'s reintroduction to mainstream. You know, beyond Tropic Thunder, the this the summer before, yep. which is a great movie, by the way. And Tom Cruise has said he wants to play Les Grossman again. Yes, I saw that recently. Post Top Gun, he's like, "Hey, Tropic Thunder needs another sequel, like an in-universe movie with Les Grossman in it. Come on, it doesn't have to be the Tropic Thunder cast. Nope. But it just Les Grossman as a character Grossman needs to continue, yes, yes. which is very true because that is one of his greatest characters. Yes. Now, Iron Man, of all these films, I mean, because it was the first one, a ton of practical effects. They did a they, great job. They hold up. It yeah. holds up. The store, the score, the acting. Doesn't, it doesn't look like it's aged very nope. much. It, the 4K transfer still looks fantastic. Yep. It looks great. Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, volume one. Movie that comes out of nowhere, comes out swinging, yep. hits you hard with yep. the music when he's swinging, right? You know, like just dancing through the opening credits. It's like- On an alien planet, yeah. It's so weird, and it all lands. Yep. Everything of it lands. Like, you know, like his- introduction as star lord and then gamora the whole crew is great crew like their found family kind of story it's phenomenal yep then the first big team up movie the one that really kind of perfects that formula and that is marvel's the avengers that's yep. number eight 
Number seven, Spider-Man's first solo movie in the MCU, Spider-Man Homecoming, anchored, of course, by uh, Michael Keaton's fantastic villain, the Vulture. Yep. Sorry, it's been a lot of talking. We're at two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah. And, of course, number six, Avengers 2.5, a.k.a. Captain America Civil, Civil War. War, which is still such a good fucking movie, dude. Which is, of course, Spider-Man and Black Panther's introduction to the universe. Do you remember the announcement for this? It was originally called the Serpent Society. They were throwing people off. Yeah, they off. were just fucking with people. But people were still like, okay, sure. Well, we'll we trust you. We'll you trust Guardians. You. We trust you. Yeah, they're like, okay. And then Feige's like, no. Wait a minute. Change, Ch- change that. Change that. Here's what it's supposed to be. When Civil War hit the screen, fucking Hall H blew up because... Everyone knew that was coming. We were gonna, we were we were building a path to this movie. Because yeah, because of Age of Ultron. Oh, like, it was right there. Yep. It was right top of mind. Yep. And uh yeah, great movie. So and now we're, we're into the top five, so let's yes. alternate here. Yes, okay. So number five for me, and I think both of us agree, it's it's a top five movie, just where do you put it? Yeah. And that is Thor Ragnarok. Okay. Yep. Yep. Taika Wakiti's introduction, a com- more comical tone with with Thor, sticks to landing. Give new life, gave Chris Hemsworth new life, you know? Um, I really like this movie. Um, I know some of our friends hate it. I, and, but they're but they're wrong. And I will say the trailer with Led Zeppelin. So good. Like it fits and it becomes the fight. It's song such a great bookend. Yeah. You start with him at the height of his power with the hammer. Yep. With the immigrant song. And then the height of his power without it at the yep. end when he's embraced. He's the he's the god of thunder. Thunder. Yep. Like when he's then fighting on the coming in on the rainbow bridge. It's just Fuck, it's so yeah. good. And then you're so happy you had a good experience, and then you see and then Thanos, with the the ship Thanos' ship. ship. Like, oh, fuck. Uh, number four here. Avengers Endgame. This was the end of the Infinity Saga. A lot of change, uh, a lot of heartbreak. We have death. We have repercussions. We have a five-year gap. We have a fucking time heist. There's a lot that happened in this. Oh movie. yeah, it goes hard. Like I'm not gonna say you got I, Smart Hulk. I complained at times. We got we got Smart Hulk. We get Ronin. Like uh, we get so much, you know. And I'm not I, earlier. It sounded like it may have sounded like I was complaining. Not complaining because it's a great fucking movie. I think by the time we get to the final fight, we're exhausted, but we still have enough at the end to get our Avengers assembled. Which yeah. Was, Awesome, because we've been waiting, what, 10 fucking years for Avengers. Yeah, you get your Lord of the Rings, like, Ride of the Road hero moment, you yep. know, at the end. It's yeah. fucking great. It's, uh, like, it's just, it goes so hard. Yep, so number four, Endgame. So then moving on, number three, a movie we watched earlier today, and that is Spider-Man No Way Home. Phenomenal multiverse story wraps up so many great moments of the Sony Mar- Sony Spider-Man versus both iterations. Yep. The Maguire <laughs> and Andrew Garfield. Plus continuation of the MCU's kind of multiverse saga. Doctor Strange has some great emotional beats with Peter Parker. Yes. You know, like the, you know, call me Steven. It still, it still feels weird stuff at the end, you know, with like him in, like telling Peter, you don't want this. Well, not only that, but he says, everyone you know that loves you, we yeah, like he, like, won't remember you. Yeah. Like, and so, and I know they didn't, there's a reason why they didn't put a shot of Peter going, well, because it would have made it hokey that moment, but it was like, we have to get serious. And you leave it on Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. for that. Like, he really brings it in that movie, and it really ties a lot of it into the wider MCU, by still, but it's still being a great Spider-Man story. And we end the shot with him in the classic Spider-Man blue and yeah. red. Yeah, and you also rift off the one more day kind of like, you know, careful what you wish for yeah. kind of like motif. Yep. And it's a monkey's paw kind of situation where you wish for this, and now you got to deal with those consequences. Yep. And that's that's a Spider-Man story. Yep. So number two. Uh, number two, Avengers: Infinity War. This was the culmination of ten years. Started off with Iron Man in 08. We get to, you know, uh, 2018. This movie had everything we wanted. You had everyone. In the MCU, well, except for Ant Man and except for Hawkeye, which on purpose, um, there's a reason for that. But I'm sure that we'll probably find out that there's deleted scenes that they have stashed away for. With, with except with... Ant Man's happening at the exact same time, so he. That's true. Been. That's fair. That's fair. Ant Man and Wasp is happening at some time, but Hawkeye, we don't have, we don't know much about it until the beginning of Endgame. Infinity War, great soundtrack, great score, um, great storytelling. Uh, the introduction with with uh, with. Um, the Black Order and Thanos confronting uh, the Dude. Asgardians. Incredible opening. Fucking incredible opening. Yeah, with opening. the distress call over the logo. Which yes. Is, and which is Kenneth Branagh, yes. by the way. Yep. Which is great callback because he was the director of the first Thor. Yep. But, um, um, great movie. 
great movie from start to finish. And I know we say that at the end, if you were a casual movie goer, you were left with what the hell, what, what the hell just happened here. But if you're, if you were a diehard Marvel fan, you knew that this was going to happen because we were getting part two, but incredible movie. Russo brothers did everything. They put their heart and soul into all these movies, but you could tell they put everything they had into the infinity war. And it was from start to finish a damn near perfect Marvel movie. And that the only reason it's not number one is because the perfect Marvel movie already exists. I would say the perfect superhero movie already exists. And that is Captain America, the winter soldier. It's a great spy movie. It's a great thriller. It's got awesome action choreography. out like just coming out the ears, right? Like the fight scene between him and Bucky, Yep. the winter soldier before he knows it's Bucky, like with the knife fighting and stuff, the behind the scenes of it. I mean, if you watch it, just that point where he flips the, he flips the knife in the air and grabs it and then, Jams it in the fan. Yeah, just to go to the different angle on the attack. It's yeah. just, it's an incredibly well put together where they pulled literally no punches. Yep. And when you've got the honest trailer guys saying, okay, well, we've got nothing here, so get ready for nitpicking. And then they go <laughs> in on the movie. You know you na- you nailed it. Yeah. You know you made something yeah, incredible. Because they can always find legitimate reasons. There's always reasons. something, some logic reason, yeah. something that doesn't work. Because no movie's perfect. Yeah. This movie's if there's ever going to be a perfect superhero movie, that's the bar to clear. Yeah. You got to clear Captain America Winter Soldier. And I don't know if anybody has, except for maybe Logan. That's And fair. even that, Logan rests on so much. Yeah. It rests on all that baggage. Yep. Captain America Winter Soldier, you could put that on to somebody that doesn't really know comics. They're into that shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful comic book movie. It's and I a, should also say there's The Dark Knight yep. and a the, couple others. But like, that's that's the bar. Well, you know, and it could be a quick side sidebar on this. Where the Dark Knight frustrates people is that the Joker seems for such a egomaniacal, psychotic maniac, he has a logical solution for every scenario. Like it's his path is so lined up perfectly that it's like someone that crazy is that great of a strategist, really? Like people find that hard to believe, and I, I'm okay with that argument. With the Dark Knight, it's a great but movie. But clip scene's so good. Oh yeah. My God. Oh God. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's um, incredible. But that is, I should say, it's a. Di- it's when you think superhero movie, I don't think the Dark Knight. No. It's not really a superhero. movie. No, it's a Batman movie. It's not a superhero movie. That's the distinction. Yes. Yeah. Even Logan, it's not really a superhero movie. No. It's just a Wolverine movie. Yes. Whereas that's a superhero movie. Yes. And like we've said this before, at the very two and a half, three hours ago, the dichotomy of action superhero. Spy movie, every it balances perfectly. Yeah, everything. Nothing's out of place. And even the humor is perfect because With the Sam Wilson on your left bit at the, at the opening, you know, like it's just fantastic. Yep. And like even the stuff with Sil- Sitwell, you know, when they bring him up on the roof and terrorize him and all that, it's like. And then while Sam Sam's bringing him up, and they're joking about finding him a date. Yep. It's phenomenal. Plus, you got Robert fucking Redford. Robert as, Redford, as the twist bad guy. Oh. Holy shit, what a moment. And what a movie. And what a list. Yes. We have all 29 movies. 29 movies. And I don't know how much I'm going to edit this down, but as so you know, we are at roughly two hours, 49 and a half minutes to actually get this list on paper. That's a lot of time to record. It's a lot of work, man. man. It's a lot of work. A lot of words to be said. Yeah. But a lot of movies to go through. And a lot of good ones, too. Like, there's very few on this list I would not want to watch again. Like, even Thor The Dark World, you tell me you're going to put that on. You're like, all right. Might fast forward through some scenes, but all right. Yeah. The only one I'm like, I would rather not is Eternals. Yes. That's the only one. What about Love and Thunder, though? Even Love and Thunder, I'd still watch some of the stuff because there's some fun moments. Ant-Man and Wasp? Mm. Yes. Really? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, there's quite a bit in that movie. Okay. The stuff where he gets stuck in the suit, like, and it's going up Oh, yeah, yeah. The size size issue. Yeah. Paul Rudd is endlessly watchable. Yeah. It's like basically the stuff without him that's not in that movie. So like, honestly, and you could tell me you're going to reorder 22 through 28, even 21 through 28. I wouldn't really nitpick you too hard. Okay. Tw- Ant-Man for me is unequivocally good. Okay. Like, And I would say like, there's not a lot you could go at it for. Sure, sure. The rest all have some serious holes or okay. flaws. Okay. Even Ant Man's got you know the villain issue, sure, but it's still super fun. Yeah, like it's unique, it's it's interesting, it's it's different than the rest of what's going on. So I would say my cut line of like, you know, not even just the Eternals in terms of like that's bad. My in terms of like 
totally repeat watching all of them. Like, where do you draw the repeat watches at? You know, put it on Disney Plus, get the Blu-ray out. For me, it's after Ant-Man. Okay. That's my line of, I'll watch those a bunch. Okay. Like, I'll, I'll rewatch all of them in a row. Whereas, Multiverse of Madness and On, I was good with what I saw in theaters. Sure. I, I, I have no problem arguing with that. And I will say, we, 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 we touched on this at the very beginning. We don't think they're, we're looking at, you know, 29 good and awful movies. Like, some of these aren't great, but they have a lot of issues. Probably the only one I will say, in my opinion, is bad is The Eternal. I agree. Yeah. The Eternals is just... And that's sad eh. because the director, she's coming off of an Oscar-winning film. And, I, and again, it's, it's just Marvel not getting out of their own way because I guarantee you, you let her control the whole thing, it's a better movie. Because yeah. I bet that cast ain't near as big. Yeah. And honestly, I want to see what she does if, with a, a superhero movie. I don't know what Warner is going to turn into. But under Warner's do whatever the fuck you want strategy before Discovery, I would have loved to see her take on a Superman movie or a Green Lantern movie. Okay, that's right. I would have loved to see her take on that side of the universe. Okay. For DC, but now I don't know what Marvel's what Warner's going to turn into. Yeah, we still have we have about a year to two. Because she's a great and, director. Yeah. Visually, Eternals is stunning. It's oh got no, a no, lot no, of no, great no. shots. It's great, but also. I think Marvel and Disney screwed up. They completely marketed this to be Salma Hayek and Angelina Jolie and their secondary characters. Yeah, they're not even, they're not the thrux, the thrux, the, it's Gemma Chan yes. and Richard Madden. Yes. You know, and they didn't market them that way. Nope. It was Jolie and Salma Hayek were the big were the big marketing. Even Gilgamesh's places. character is awesome and then he dies. Yeah. It's like Yeah, when I want to see him team up with the thing and Hulk. Yep. Come on. That would have been awesome. That would have been incredible. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, Gil, don't even get me started on that. Because if we, if we start dissecting the Eternals, it's going to make Well, yeah, bad. we're not going to go in on the it's Eternals too hard here at the end. We're just going to wrap up our list. I'm going to throw the, the image here up on the screen of the whole list here. So any, any major, anything else major jump out at you as we've no, gone through? No, just that we, we, we both rated Age of Ultron a lot higher than I expected us to be. And maybe, um, looking through this. Far from home, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a fight to be higher than it was. But I, the other thing is, you have a, you you gave a lot more praise to Doctor Strange than I expected. I thought that one might be a little lower on your card. The first one, there's it's just it's got a a good pace to it. Yeah, you know, it's got a got just got too many good moments. And Cumberbatch is such like a likable guy. That's strange. No, that's 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 my name. Yeah, like that whole like bit about Doctor like his name. Well, and the comedy with Wong is yeah, funny. Wong you know. is great. I mean, he's Magic Coulson. Like, yeah. like come on, what's not to like? What about that movie do you not like? You yeah. know, like even obviously there's the recasting with Tilda Swinton, but it's yes. like if you don't know yeah. that there's that backstory, yeah. If you don't know of the comic book fan, there's no problem with it. Sure. In fact, she's fantastic. Yeah. So I agree. I agree. You know, at some point it needs to stand apart from the comic. Sure. sure. You know? So that's where that's where some of the issues I have with okay. it or why I view it that way. Okay. But audience, let us know what you think of our list. This one's probably going to be heavier on the YouTube side than it is uh, on audio services, but we're still going to put it out on audio services. Sure. If you've somehow stayed here for almost three hours on YouTube, thank you. Let us know what your list is in the comments below. And, uh, you know, maybe tell us why you think we're wrong on some of these things. Let us know. Yeah. And we'll be back for episode 51 here. What will be through episode four of and four and five of She-Hulk probably by the time we record next. So we'll be on the back half of She-Hulk. We'll be getting ready for we'll be getting ready for Andor in a couple. For we'll Andor, be, you know, couple House of Dragon, we'll have more episodes yeah. to talk about. Harley Quinn's probably wrapped up by then, or just about to be. Yeah, we're in episode eight, so yeah, it should be wrapped up. We'll by have then. a lot to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Strength, Star Trek's back with lower decks. I'm I'm really liking it so far. Yeah. Episode two just dropped, and they had a great callback to Deep Space Nine with Martok and they had him doing a deep a Deep Space Nine or Dungeons and Dragons Klingon version. Oh god, like an auto generated. So but I, it's I need to watch lower decks. Uh, yeah, lower decks is great. Uh, it's just a great Star Trek show. And I've been rewatching Deep Space Nine. Fuck, that show was so good. Oh my God. What a great show. But speaking of shows, ours is going to wrap up here for episode number 50. Fusion, it has been an absolute blast doing episode 50 together. Yes, it has, man. I mean, we've been doing this for two years now. We started at the beginning of COVID, right? Yep. <laughs> right at, right during that first DC fandom, actually, yep, yep, which sure. they just canceled. Yep. But again, with everything going on with Discovery, I don't think they would have wanted to work on no. it. because. What do you market? Exactly. Who knows when the fuck things are happening? Yeah. Next spring, though, I next spring, summer, I would imagine fandoms back. 
Yeah, probably. It was um, a great event. Yeah, had to see you in three years. We had some barbecue the other day. So oh, burnt ends were those burnt delicious. ends were delicious, man. God, yeah. Oh they, they my came out, goodness. They came out, guys, they came out perfect. What can I say? Photo here. They were so good. But man, it's been a pleasure. Glad to, you know, every few years we should probably like do this, maybe add a few more folks to the panel and at some point do a watch, a complete watch through and then let's get our thoughts as a group of how we feel about the MCU watching it. Dude, I'm game. That one we'll have to stream. Yes. I'm definitely, definitely game for that. That would be a great time. But it's been a pleasure, man. Been a pleasure. As always. Heck yeah, dude. See you, everyone.